Well, yeah. I don't like things that don't make sense. And so... <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> We're sporting it in white, Nicholas. Because it is white. Uh, oh, have you thrown me under the bus? <laughs> Is that why you're drawn to this game? Is that why Nick is drawn to this game? Yeah. Is that something you'd like to say again because the camera's on you now? Well, you know what I actually just like? Attention. Time to go buy new brown shoes. Someone what the is. fuck am I now? Fallon! Yeah. Fallon! You fuck yeah, man. If I did drugs, I'd be so fucking high right now. I have forever been in awe of the people who love everything about them. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> the cake wet. <laughs> Welcome to Back Pocket for another evening. I am your host, Nick Boy. It is Thursday, the 8th of April, a mere 15 days until my birthday, uh, and I am very excited to welcome you here to the Low Key Studios. Tonight on the show, we work our way through a lovely maze of death, but I won't be dying alone because I am joined by... Gus, who recently did a little shame shaving. Ooh, yeah. he's talking about his pubis. Oh, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Next to me. Hey, hey, Stephanie, I am back from the farm and about to go away again to a remote location. So I'm just, just checking out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Peter, save your local street cats, people. Good. Save them. Good. This is an important message. Uh, I like the idea that Steph ever has a period where she isn't just checking out for a while as well. Uh, that you either go through a phase of not listening or not being in the city. <laughs> <laughs> At least not being there is the best excuse for not listening. That like, well, I actually wasn't there. Yeah, so. I wasn't there for that. I spend a lot of time, like, in a different place in my mind. In the head and I'm just now allowing my body the opportunity to catch up. <laughs> yeah, good. So now every time you say that, I'm going to think of that song from Les Mis about, like, Castle in the Cloud. Like, that's your... That's your oh. You're going to have that creepy little girl's voice. I being used to like, be able to play that on flute, but I played the second part, so it went like this. Do, 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 do. Dude. So it sounded nothing like the song. There's that beautiful lady no, music, music we know and love. <laughs> it's an important part of the song oh, that hey, it's someone a, has to do. It's a classic for a reason. So. <laughs> when you were at the farm, did you see a like a, a small brown rabbit? My dad sent it there like maybe like 25 years ago. Mm. Um, it went its to name the it responds state. to Miffy. Uh, did you see the rabbit? Because I'm sure it must be there. Yeah. Uh, seen it since so is my farm. goldfish pumpkin pie. Uh, my first dog, my second dog, my third dog, my first grandfather, my second <laughs> grandfather. Uh, all of them went to a farm upstate. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, they were all there. They were Having happy. They were still alive and having a great time. So good. Hey, you had so. a rabbit? Uh, we did have a rabbit. Oh, very briefly. Very brief. I don't remember its name. Did it I did, die quickly? Is that what you said? Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. uh, we right. found it in the suburbs. And, oh, right. and uh, like it must have been hit by a car already or something. It was like it was alive for two days or something. Mm -hmm. And Dad was like, "We can't." Keep it. I, I don't know what he did with it. I similarly found a small bunny rabbit uh, after it was dropped by a sea eagle, and I was like, "I can save this." Spoiler: I couldn't. Mm -hmm. But they don't bounce. It's been dropped by an eagle. You <laughs> saw it fall? Yeah. How this far? Is, uh, far. Wow. But I was like, I and will he save it. He tried his darndest. We've, uh, we've already reached the level five hype train. And, oh, the, and, and, and can I tell you, can I tell you, little fun, wait, wait, oh, yeah, do it. Sad. <laughs> Saddest too. Little, little fun story about that hype train. Uh, that hype train actually killed an entire warren of rabbits. <laughs> Uh, just ran through all of them. Uh, welcome to Backpack for another week. I'm sorry that we we started the show, I feel like, pretty positively. And then we ended up talking about the murder of a lot of small, fluffy animals. Um, have we all had a good week? Yeah, well, well, as Steph said, like, this couch went camping. Please. We had a lovely time. <laughs> this couch went camping. <laughs> this couch went camping. <laughs> and we all had a delightful time. We didn't talk once about work, did we? Gus no. bathed in the river. I did. He did. I started a fire from scratch. There was a perfectly Meh. good shower not 100 metres away, but uh, Gus bathed in the river. Yeah. And I saw him emerging over the hill, washing his hair, like, yeah. drying his hair with a towel. towel on shoulder. You know, yeah. no shirt. It was very, like... Like Helen Mirren in, <laughs> in The Queen when yes. she goes yeah. hunting for deer. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it was a beautiful area and it had a, a creek that almost kind of encircled the whole farm we were on. And it was like a nice 
babbling brook. It was deep and flowing. And I was like, I don't want to line up for the shower that you guys are all having to be like, are you ready for the shower? And I'm like, I'm going to dive into the river. Both of these What's stories this? have been embellished heavily. <laughs> Diving into the river was wading into the river hang in on, on. jeans pulled up to his knees <laughs> and starting up, a really fire black was, was using a tool he bought at a like uh, hang shop on, hang on, to, hang on, to, hang on. to flick magnesium, which isn't the same as like starting a fire from scratch. Sure. And also it didn't start the fire. Okay. Okay. Whoa, whoa. I'll, I'll happily it was the beauty the Whoa, the I will let you the shit on the, the, the river story detail. because yeah, yeah. that was a bit weird. Yeah, okay, yeah, like, yeah. But the, the fire starting thing, we all didn't have faith that this thing was going to work. I can Correct. attest we were there, were, there were flames. There were flames. There were flames. Yeah. It's the little like thing that you scratch. They blew out fire. immediately afterwards, but there were flames. That's, the, we, yeah, that's the stuff that um, the cowards use when they can't use it just with wood. <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly. I ripped the log in half, Captain American style. All these you stories. Saw that? I did. These she saw that. Stories. And my, an apple. My favorite and an part apple. of it. <laughs> my favorite oh my part of it is, and I love you, is uh, watching you say on that Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> uh, watching on Instagram because, like, I grew up in the country, and whenever I go back to the country, I go back to the country like this, wearing a Lakers hat. I got rips in my jeans that I paid for. Not everyone looks happens. at you and goes, "Like you walk through the town square and like, there's the one that got away." Totally. <laughs> Look at his fancy purple hat. But also, like, I'll be I'll be riding on uh, the back of a Ute, throwing out salt licks, dressed like this. Uh, Gus goes to the farm and just looks like a rod and gun commercial. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, the fact that you have clothes that I've never seen before that you only pull out for these moments is is very funny to me. Because I have it's yeah. like old flannel that like yeah, yeah I'm gonna wear it on a farm. I have a hat that looks. Looks like I've worn it since I was a young farmer boy. I bought it from a music festival. I bought it last week. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am a big b believer in like um, event appropriate outfits. Yeah. And I think we all got a little bit excited about dressing up for farm life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although I have to say that when we saw another farmer drive past with his ute and, and all of his kelpies in the back of the ute, um, you know, on the access road, sort of saw Peter and I like with our fluffy dog pulling grass seeds out of her. And I was like, she's fine. She's just, she's doing really well. <laughs> I felt some deep shame. <laughs> yeah, I feel shame. Well, uh, they should feel shame when they come here and their dog starts attacking every creature <laughs> because, yeah. like, herding up just, you know, lost tourists. <laughs> uh, well, the part. I'm glad you guys all had a lovely weekend. I had a very nice weekend. Thanks for asking. Easter. Um, my kids got sick and that was awesome. But I will say, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, very frustrating. So my NFL team, and you have to listen to this because uh. that was on the farm story, mm -hmm. got a new quarterback. And I feel very conflicted about this because we had a great quarterback for years. The Panthers had Cam Tom Newton. Tom Hardy. Very close. Cam Newton, great personality. Big personality, great guy. Uh, we then ditched him. Uh, we brought in someone who was just like a temp one. We could have got Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, generational, once in, a, once in a generation quarterback. Amazing talent, incredible guy on my fantasy team. Very important. Currently playing for who? Uh, the Houston Texans. How's his Instagram game? Uh, well, ha, funny you should say that because it turns out Sean Watson has been using Instagram to uh, get a massage therapist to come over and touch his dick even though they don't want to. Uh, so this story broke over the last couple of weeks and Deshaun Watson, who's been wanting to be traded from the Houston Testons because he hates it there, uh, who would have been like, unbelievable contract, every team in the NFL wanted him and then all of a sudden everyone's been like, we can't go near you with 10 foot pole because you will make us touch a penis. Uh, and so Jeez. this has turned into a big th issue. So the Panthers, we're going to get him. No, we can't get him. So now we got Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, first of all, terrible name. Second of all, terrible quarterback. Uh, was on the Jets. Two years, terrible. Sees ghosts. Goes to throw the ball and then like flinches because he thinks someone's cutting out because the defend the Jets have a terrible defensive line and so we're constantly letting him get sacked. So now we're stuck with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. I have to root for a man named Sam Darnold. Anyway, is he a sex pest? Uh, no, 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 no. He's like he's like a clean he's a clean cut American boy. So he is either perfect or kills. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So now I feel very conflicted about how I can get behind this person when emotionally I feel nothing. Like I almost feel like I want the sex pest because at least I have him on my fantasy team. Maybe he'll yep. be like an underdog and he'll he'll really surprise you, Nick. And you'll be like, I should have given him a chance at the beginning to show how well he can push the ball through his. With the name well, like Sam Dudley, he is supposed to be very good. The Jets are a terrible team, so he could never flourish. And we do have an offensive coordinator uh, called Joe Brady, Brady, who is very very good at you know bringing out the juice in these people. So hopefully the juice rises in the Donald family. And, only uh, with consent, though. Only with. Consent. Gus. So these are new pants. No, they're not. <laughs> they're they made to look like new pants. <laughs> they're new ones that I bought because another friend who came camping with us had them and they looked very country, so I bought them straight away. 
<clears throat> okay, good. Uh, thank you, Toxic Chorg. Ten gift subs during all that. Thank you very much, Toxic Chorg. All right. Uh, the last thing that I need to mention before we get into the show is that we're not alone. He's been sitting there quietly. In the shadows, listening like to the Sam Donald story. And it is, of course, Will on the one Are we still talking about Nick's purple hat or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Will, how was, how was your weekend? <laughs> was it good? Was it good, Will? Yeah, it was good. It was good spending time with the family uh, and avoiding chocolate because I just didn't feel like it. I just I know we talked about chocolate last week and how there's good brands, there's bad. I just I avoided that train. Well, now I, you've offended me and Nick. Yeah. I got my fill talking about chocolate. We didn't eat that much. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I didn't need to have a lot of chocolate this year. Yeah. What? That's weird. You're Phil talking about chocolate. Uh, can I tell you... Uh, what does mean? Very quickly, I promise yes. this isn't about the NFL. Oh, um, uh, Banjo has been carrying around his basket of chocolate eggs, chocolate eggs since he got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yesterday morning, he, I woke up and uh, Elkie's up, he's up, they're wandering around the living room and I am on the couch like still waking up. And I look at Banjo, I'm like, what are you doing? And he's wandering around planting all the eggs everywhere. And he goes, I'm setting up an egg hunt for Elkie. Aww. And so then Aww. there's another Aww. Easter egg hunt Aww, that he set up and he hid eggs all through the house and then he's, take, he's holding a hand and walking around going look Elkie there's an egg and then she picks it up and she goes egg egg and he and he's like put it in the basket and puts it in the basket it's the cutest thing in the world and then every time I put him to bed uh, each night I go to shut the door and I'm shutting the door after I read the book and he goes dada and I open up the door and he goes happy Easter and I go happy Easter to you too bubba and he goes tell Elkie I said happy Easter when you go to bed and then it just shuts the door like fucking amazing that's Although, so sweet gosh that is so cute while adorable <laughs> yeah. you, your children have yet to grasp the concept of seasonal festivities they're like this <laughs> yeah, is just totally. a new it thing it goes on do. forever oh, yeah. mm. my, it does go on forever my dad to this day mm. lays out an Easter egg hunt for my sister and I both over 30 that's great every Christmas he plans a treasure hunt. So he like, instead of buying us a gift, he'll put 50 bucks in an envelope <laughs> and then there'll be like six envelopes of puzzle to get to the and last one. And, and he's, he's recorded tape like himself being like a German military officer. This is literally officer. the Easter he's, episode of Bluey. He is a yeah, right. yeah. He's a smart man, Colin Burns, as well. So he does like really complex word puzzles and like things. And yeah, there's times when it, it like they've in involved like video messages of, yes, yeah, I'm German... Yeah. <clears throat> Lieutenant La or something. Last year was his laziest effort ever, and he designed an entire an entire crossword. And then letters from each of the correct answers in the crossword were an anagram for where to find the letter. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing your dad, like he would also get small amounts of energy seeing you guys be stumped by stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. dads work. It's like oh, they can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. And your dad and my adorable son, both of them, throw the ball better it, than Sam does. All right, let's get into the news. Of the week. No. With what we played this <laughs> yeah, week. Saved. saved. What, how I saved this? I'm saved just saying what you'll be playing. You guys have to trust the throws. you got to trust the throws. <laughs> Unlike Sam Donald, brought to you by Brent Jones, a.k.a. Loki Cat. Loki Cat, what do you think about Sam Donald? Uh, Loki Cat, I would say... Uh, I would put him on the Brady. list of, like, top three most dedicated uh, back pocket bits slash Nick Boy fans. Because I saw him in, in OPL. Yep. I see him in back pocket. Yep. I see him in every charity stream we do. Loki Cat just gets the bomb, man. a lot of time on his hands. Dangerous, Absolutely. dangerous dabbling with lists again, but I, I like where you've gone there. Like, <laughs> and I dare say Loki like, Cat yeah. is better on a farm than either of us. Agreed. Yeah. I didn't even have to think for a second <laughs> okay. there. I'm like, anyone's better on a farm than me. He, I, look the I guarantee I you, when he bathes in a creek, he does it nude like a man. Like yeah. a man. Yep. And, and then he walks out and he's like, I know it was cold. It's just shrinkage. <laughs> I got post story, post show stories to tell. Them. How exciting! Ooh. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, in order to get to the post show, we need to do the actual show. So we got to suffer through some gaming talk before we get to that story. Because <laughs> a shriveled dick. Uh, let's start off with. Oh, come on! It's nothing to do with the creek. It's just shriveled by itself. Yeah, good. I just I walked into the most like epic post show. conversation today. Can yeah. I just I was like, what are we talking about? And everyone was like, dicks. And I was like. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> okay. We can talk about vaginas later. Okay. Um, there's no smooth segue to this. Steph, it takes two. <laughs> yeah. The penis and the vagina. <laughs> it sure does. We're never going to get another sure sponsor again. Does. <laughs> uh, yeah, we started, we started Game Club. This is our new um, uh, back pocket thing to kind of replace the playbacks that is going to be super fun and like even better than any playback you've ever seen. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making promises. <laughs> uh, and it was really cool. Uh, Peter and I played this together. Um, so we both just kind of like hung out. 
um, in the same frame of the Twitch stream, which is something that we've been able to do for ages and have just never done because we live in the same house together. And that's just a thing that was kind of nice to be able to just sit there together and play this very co-op focused game. I feel like it was so it's it's so far exceeded my expectations in the way they've implemented the co-op mechanics. Mm. I mean, I feel like you've played a f- you once you've played a few co-op games, you start to see the same kind of uh, scenarios sort of repackaged in different ways. But this felt really cool and different and clever, and I was just super impressed with it from the start. Yeah, the puzzles like are always they change so quickly. Like mm. we played three hours of it, and it was just like there wasn't a breath between beats every beat felt like a different type of gameplay mm. uh it's always fun being small in a normal sized world <laughs> yeah like like you know it's a toy story effect like yeah. it's always fun being like little around big things that you recognize should be small uh but yeah mechanically it's just it's really cool that it just keeps itself interesting uh because it like it's it's really polished gameplay wise but it you know these things can get long in the tooth if it's like if the the core idea, the core mechanic gets a bit dull. Mm. But it's just, for the first three hours at least, we've had heaps of fun with every puzzle. Like, they're interesting. They're, like, they make you think. Uh, There's some cool boss fights. Mm. It's cool. And And they're they're well-placed for you to try and, um, you know, work out your respective roles together by trying different Mm. things. And that's always really fun because then it's, like, it feels like a real win when you figure it out. And it's a sizable campaign by all accounts I've heard that, like, yeah, you guys have sunk about three hours in. You're going to be playing this a few more times over the month to get to the end of it. But, yeah, it's not a sort of one and done or even like a two session game by the looks of it i've seen yeah apparently 11 hours and okay. so we're we're three into 11 hours uh yeah. we to i think we're we just started the third chapter mm. um so they like they're quite meaty there's like good cutscene stuff in it i know a lot of people have a problem with the book i like the book i think <laughs> uh, yeah, i've heard so much about the book i cannot wait until we start playing <laughs> well, yeah. I see this it book. puts yeah. some like i think um fun absurdity into what is a very you know, ridiculous situation to find yeah. yourselves in. It's not a particularly good character or good writing or like, it's just like this like noisy stereotype thing. Mm. Yeah. But it is, you know, it's sex just, pest book. It just, that stereotype. <laughs> just it just is the dev from that moment in the game awards. And that's, what's fun about it. It's yeah. like, <laughs> like this guy puts everything of himself in these games <laughs> and, and a way out didn't gel with me. Like this is, this has all the yeah. fun that, that developer should be putting into his game. I guess so. when I was talking about the length as well, what I find interesting is that, yeah, this game can only be played in co-op. Um, and so it's asking 11 hours from two people at the same time, yep. which for you guys, your scenario is great. And like, you know, couples, siblings, friends who live in the same, like it's it's a big ask to be like, hey, can you sink 11 hours into it? Um, you can play online, obviously. He's talking about is, us. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I'm just saying. He doesn't like spend 11 hours with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to that. But it is more than like, I would have thought a, a specifically co-op game would be like, hey, we're three to four hours because that might be a big session together. Mm. So I'm impressed. I think it's cool that they've gone, yeah, it's going to be a solid, fully fleshed out game. It, it just feels so sophisticated in the way they've um, they've set it up. And it feels almost like, um, it feels polished and funny and charming and heartfelt in the way that like Little Big Planet is, but with really kind of complex uh, ideas. Mm. And the world, even though you're kind of small and you've shrunk down into a house, it is much more of a imaginative uh, version of uh, you know being small in a house. Like you go through some parts where a lot of the time we were going through, we're like, what part of the house is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very yeah. complex and the boss level. I guess right. the 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 wife is an engineer, so I think the yeah. um you know the, they've explained that by saying you know she creates and invents things and she's got all kinds of stuff going on that you end up inside of and yeah. floating around. Yeah, but I don't think it tries to pretend to be this is a real house yeah, because it's yeah. like it's definitely a fantasy game. Mm. There's talking squirrels. There's like yeah, it's all <laughs> magical realism. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. it's the it's the kids fantasy come to life yeah uh who's trying to get her parents to reconnect um on the co-op thing it's done the same thing that a way out did where you only need to buy the game once and you can anyone i think you can just download the game on any platform as the the, as the other person Mm. version of it and then you just as soon as someone invites you you can play which is really that's a really effective way to do this because you have to play with two people so to give that other code away for for quote unquote free is just it, it's a no brainer for this company to be doing this because 
that's the kind of game they're making. Mm. Uh, it looks really generous, but also it's just like that's how it needs to be played. Yeah. So like, you're never fighting with the other. camera either, which I think is so, such a key thing for a game like this, where you're you're constantly in split screen and you're you know trying to sort of see where each of you. Uh, placed to be totally, able to make the yeah. puzzle happen um it do yeah it just feels really good it was super fun and um but well, we need to pump the brakes because we're going to play through the whole thing all four of us and then do a whole uh sort of play by play of the game at the end yeah, of the month as yeah. well so. so you guys got to play it so we can all kind of be a part of the same game club yeah and no. try and keep up with us so that when we're playing and the next time we'll be playing together is probably next friday yeah game club um sorry friday week so tomorrow uh eight days from now um and we'll be playing through the next three hours. So make sure you can be there and not have anything spoiled for you if you don't have it spoiled for you. So that means you need to play through six hours between now and next week. Go, 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 go. <laughs> it's totally doable. Yeah. Uh, you and I are going to book in some sessions for this next week as well to get well, started. I love that so. we're like, we're both busy people. So we're like, how many sessions could we do it? I'm like, we could cover it one day. Yeah. And like get up in the morning, <laughs> yeah. coffee at eight and be like, off we go. And see if it, we can finish it. We definitely had that thing of like, like, uh, we're on totally different schedules. And so it was like, it's going to be hard to do like an hour or two here, a yeah. night and that sort of thing. So we were like, what if we just took like a work day and just like, it only takes, it, like oh, yeah. it, it takes two all day. And the problem there is deep. Thing out. when we do the full episode on it in the end of the month, it's going to be like, we had this lovely couple every, <laughs> like we had this one day, my eyes were bleeding. We were almost <laughs> at the end. I'm like, just fucking finish it. Yeah, totally. uh, yeah. So I don't know if we'll do it that way. We'll, we'll, um, I will, I will say that like the three hours that we played felt really full. And I think I would be exhausted by the game if I tried to do it in one sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's a lot, it, and it's jumping around like it's, it draws inspiration from a lot of different genres of game yeah. in a really kind of mm. kooky, clever way. So it's like it rockets along and you're constantly, your brain is constantly trying to catch up with what it's presenting yeah, you cool. with now. But it also looks like there are good moments to put it down as well, as you said. If you're changing genre and way play styles, there's moments to go like, okay, cool, we finished that fun. Fun bit, although you did say it just doesn't let up. As well. Yeah, it's like, like you beat a boss, it triggers a cutscene, and the end of the cutscene is you guys falling off a cliff, and then suddenly you're playing a cliff diving game. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, okay, this thing just moves and moves <laughs> and moves. Yeah. So it's very cool. Uh, and you did mention that you're going to be streaming this next Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday. Um, but the streams will still happen. There will be a stream tomorrow and a stream on Tuesday next week in place of the game club streams. Uh, and that'll be... One of us going through something, uh, and I think I'm uh, I'm up tomorrow. Yep. What are you gonna play? Well, I th I think I'm gonna start Prey because uh, I have lots of I have lots of games Prey. that I'm currently playing, but it feels like Prey is the one that I can like. Pray. Yeah, pray. Do you know why that's good? Why? Because then we can talk about how far through it I've gotten. <gasps> oh my oh, goodness! Oh, you oh, live oh, such a fucking oh, weird, oh, deceitful oh, life. The second this I'm is so weird. Like something I'm like. I'm going to play that. Now. Is this since we had the conversation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Un and also, it's believable. It's since you uh, undercut him last yep. week by playing a Excuse me, the word is cucked. Game. I cucked him. Don't you yeah, fucking cuck my game. But also, there is something so in the fact that I'll cuck you as, back. as soon as you say, I have to do something, it makes you want to do it less. So he wanted to do the thing that you had to do because yeah. that seemed like the more fun option because it wasn't like That's the job so he gave himself. That's and Nick, so I have that. to do those pock arts. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Uh, so... Steph, you also checked out Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after um, uh, Ghost of Tsushima released, they did a, a f they released a free DLC of like co-op multiplayer, mm. um, which I just never got around to checking out because I, Ghost of Tsushima came out around a time when a lot of games were coming out, and so I played like the crap out of it. And then I kind of was like, okay, I'm just gonna put it down for a bit and try some other stuff. And then I never went back to mm. it. Sad. Now that I've been playing the multiplayer, I kind of want to go back and play like the main game again because it's just kind of reignited the the fire. You're back in that world. Um, but the like the multiplayer is super fun, and I feel like it stands out because I, it, most kind of single player RPGs or action adventure games that I play that have a multiplayer option, they usually just really like I don't know why they spend time on it. Like Uncharted multiplayer, yeah, lame. Assassin's Creed multiplayer. Who cares? Oh, I had moments of brilliance, but like Last of Us multiplayer, the first one, it's like, why is this I didn't even, I don't think I... Yeah, right. I don't even remember that. Um, yeah, it just seems like a weird tacked on thing that just doesn't need to be there. Resident yeah. Evil multiplayer <laughs> Make starts a whole tonight. Game out of it. <laughs> like there's a beta for it tonight. It's just like, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is really freaking Unless cool. it's asymmetrical and someone gets to play the giant woman. 
It is not. No. <laughs> um, so the way they've done it is that um, they've set it up as like the first thing that you have to play through before you can unlock anything else is a series of um, uh, like sort of vignette story missions mm -hmm. that you play together. And, there's, and it's the kind of gameplay that you're familiar with, but it's a bit gamier than the main story in that you're kind of in some kind of corrupted nightmare version of Japan where you have to do more gamier things. Like anyone who's played Ghost of Tsushima knows it's quite a purist experience mm. and <clears throat> like no HUD and it's just beautiful and you're in Japan and you're doing very like specific samurai fights to try and free Japan from the Mongol invasion. This is more like these corrupted dudes have like uh, pulled on the moon magic and are corrupted with this power and you have to, you know, pray to a moon shrine to use the same power, pray, um, to release them from that. And then, you know, you will start working together as a, as a team mm -hmm. to use the right powers to take on these groups of enemies together. But even just the simple act of, like, stealthing around the villages together and timing coordinated mm. stealth assassinations is so fun. Um, and then you know, each, um, like, story mission that you go through of, of multiplayer is just introducing new mechanics that are just really fun to discover together. I don't know. I just feel like I went into this not expecting much based on my experiences of other multiplayer sort of add-ons to larger campaigns, and this was just so fun. Like, it was hard to stop. It's strictly yeah, co-op? Cool. There's no PvP? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, so so what, what you have is all of the story missions that you play first on, like, the lowest difficulty and then you unlock harder difficulties that unlock um that, that give you more like epic gear yeah then there is um uh, another mode that you can do with four people mm -hmm. and i think that's like wave modes and stuff i haven't cool. unlocked it yet and then after that you can unlock four man raids oh wow so God, that's I'm really, really interested to yeah, try that. Yeah, and, and also like the gear on the upgrades are really, really exciting. I'm playing a hunter and my class item is this ridiculous flag <laughs> yeah. on my yeah. back. Yeah, very well <laughs> I don't know how I'm like... How will everyone know I'm a hunter if I don't wear it on a flag? <laughs> how like will everyone know that I invented VLC unless I wear a flag on my back? <laughs> It's like I'm stealthing through this long grass with this like tourist. <laughs> I feel like I'm a tour guide being like, everyone, <laughs> this way. We're going, and we're traveling. Orange and we're assassinating. Yeah. And we're On moving. your left, you'll see a pile of corpses. Uh, yeah. really um, but there's four different classes as well that you can play. Like one of the Ronin. There's like a tankier character. Um, and they each have a different, you have like a class ability. And then you have like a super ultimate ability. Mm. And there's like, and you constantly up, uh, unlocking um, different sort of throwable items and um, different like extra moves and stuff that you can do. It's one of those, it's one of those games where you have so many abilities, it's hard to remember to hmm. use them all. Do you yeah. unlock this stuff persistently or yes. is it like a MOBA? Yeah, right. So it's you just, keep- You just every, at the end of every mission, it's like, here's all the new stuff you unlocked okay. and the new gear. Like and a then, skill, in a skill tree that you select? There is or? a skill tree, but it's also just like items that you yeah. can add to your right. like, um, your gear, your weapons, your like ability, thing like your bombs you, you know throwing Up knives all that kind of stuff and so it's actually more like a co-op expansion than it is a multiplayer yeah like, it, yeah. It, like you're not going to be playing this for the next 200 hours of your life style totally. like how totally like, like yeah I, th I think yeah th there's obviously replayability in it and that you want to keep playing on the harder difficulties and unlocking the better gear and stuff but i think it definitely has like yeah cool. a shelf life <clears throat> and just i want to ask like how do you find the combat translates to having multiple people working together in it because i'm saw that combat was a big part of it and how there's all the stances and that sort of stuff. Does it feel, does it get messy or does it still hold together pretty it well? It gets maybe a little bit messy, but I think it's just, it's Dead. it works great. And yeah, the way cool. that they've kind of um, stepped it up a level is by including that kind of magical element that say um, there are three different elements that you need to use and each different enemy it has a different elemental power and I need to have the moon element equipped and he needs to have the sun element equipped so that we can fight the enemies together. And but it does a good job of then like allocating who's fighting what to not all just be rushing in and trying to gank kills from each other. That's and that right. What they like, cool. what what they've kind of taken away is like from Ghost of Tsushima, you have different stances that you use to fight different enemies, yeah. and that's kind of just not a thing in this. Okay, yeah. That's, so it's simplified in that. It's the abilities. Yeah, like after that instead. Yeah, yeah. So you have. Um, yeah, you kind of just uh, dealing with the kind of elemental abilities. And it's stuff. cool that thought that through and it hasn't just turned into like, hey, this is more of the game just with m multiple mm. people who can be in control of it as well. So Yeah, and you've got like reses and stuff like that. And there's times when you're just like super in sync with each other and just doing really well in the fights. And other times when you get overwhelmed and so you're like, oh, crap, I've got to go help. Yeah. And like you worked. It's just really fun. I really, 
I really, really enjoyed it, and cool. I was super. And it's nice that you're back. I'm assuming a bit of that enjoyment as well as just being back, having a reason to go back to play this game because you did really love it a lot when you talked about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks noticeably different from the main campaign visually as well. It's very dark and black cool. and red and kind of evil. I this was this was shortlisted for me to go on my pile of sh- my shame shaving pile <clears throat> because I'm like you. I didn't finish it. I heard lots of people who really liked it, and then I know it got the PS5 upgrade, so it's like actually now Mm-mm. runs really well, like runs better on the PS5 and stuff. So yeah, 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 cool. Like I'm I'm really keen to. I probably will go and check it out again. It's also just nice to see multiplayer that doesn't involve guns. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in that sort of thing. Like looking at that combat, you go, oh, you don't really see that kind of environment, that kind of gameplay in a multiplayer sort of thing, yeah. unless it's like a survival game, like a yeah. Rust or something. So yeah, cool. It's really cool. Nice. Good week for you. <laughs> it was a great good week, week for I Steph. Had a, had a good time. It was a good week for Peter. Uh, I played a few things. <clears throat> Were they good? Maybe. Uh, obviously, I played <laughs> It Takes Two as the game club. Uh, <laughs> the whole point of the segment, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> uh, I played Odd World Soulstorm, which is one of the free games as part of the PS Plus uh, this month, uh, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> the, um, did you, did wow. you play? Did you play any of the other like Abe's Odyssey, Abe's Exodus? No, and I can stuff? I can see where the I can see where the uh, nostalgia. Like it's a <laughs> it's a game that feels like it's designed for people who played them because it feels like an old game in a lot of ways. Sure. Um, yeah. And that's not necessarily a negative thing. Like, I'm happy to play a retro-feeling game of something mm. that I have an attachment to. Mm. So maybe people who played a lot of, of Oddworld will like this. But it's, like, it's actually really bugged, uh, mm. it, and it just it feels... It, it just doesn't feel fun to play as, like, a platformer. Like, it's not... It feels like it should be faster. It, it's really sticky. It's got like old style design of like if you're jumping at a at a um, like a, an overhanging bar, the stickiness of that is weird. Like it pulls yeah, you right. across. And to not it. in a Sometimes way that other times not in a way that feels classically. Like I remember how this. I mean, maybe if you play, it, it does feel one. old, but like it feels bad old as yeah. opposed but to. But like, it, it never felt good to play. No, like, never, uh, Abe's it, Odyssey and stuff, which I played a ton of when I was a kid. Yeah, like I have a. I don't know why I like it. <laughs> no, you're right. You liked it because it was really unique. It was I like creative. It was dark as and hell. It was dark yeah, and all yeah. those kind of things. It is- and it just had to deal with all those like limitations mechanically because that was the time they were made. And now I can see Peter being like, okay, I don't have a fondness for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also yeah. now hate that they haven't fixed these like controls. Or, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's things like, like, there's some really cool ideas in it. The first 90 minutes is way too slow. Uh, and like, it's all in this kind of area, just this ugly shit brown mm. world. Yeah. Like, it's just not hate, hate fun that. to look at. Mm. But there's this thing, like, which I'm sure existed in the first one. It's like you you get your inner chi or whatever, and it's like... Mm. Nyan, 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 yep. Nyan, yep. Yep. Wow. And, like, you take control of stuff. Like, there's some really clever platforming ideas in here that are, I think, are unique to this game. You both did that thing. And it was, and both of you did it wrong. What's it? What is it? You, you. That, oh, that's it. Oh, that is that's really it. good. But even <laughs> it is, he's doing that little like. Yeah. And yeah. for those of you who can't remember, Wonder Woman's theme is. <laughs> <laughs> and Perfect. what's this on flute? Hoop, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was, of course, uh, that was the classic <laughs> lame is. <laughs> that, that, was a that was Master of the House, actually. But yeah. That was the bass line. <laughs> <laughs> so who am I? Uh, sorry, Peter. God, that was a fucking uh, thirty seconds of. In- Jokes. <laughs> All yeah, that yeah, just yeah. Intense. None of us said anything that someone who doesn't watch every piece of our content would understand. <laughs> <laughs> that is our show. Uh, yeah, so um, I like some of the ideas in it of uh, this is the worst level in a video game ever. Yeah, this, by the looks, way. this, hurts you. <laughs> this is just you. Awful, awful. I'm really I was, I I was sitting now. next to him, he was having a tough time. Yeah, right. Because I was also like, there are like logical mistakes that they've made with the game design that I think are the most infuriating for you. Where you're just like, that is the one most thing that was really frustrating to me is like, it's 2.5D, right? So it's like, it is a 3D look uh, on a 2D plane, and there's a, 
which is nice. It's always nice to have that. Uh, but like the path curves around and goes up, mm. and, and the, the camera H always stays. Files it or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Where, like where the hell am I actually being led? And, and yeah. if but it, you throw like the only real mechanics that you have as Abe are to throw things that you get, and like it looks like there's quite a lot of things you'll unlock and um, and have at your disposal. You start with water bottles and like uh, basically a. a a, an energy drink that acts as an explosive as well. Um, it, we also have to understand that this is, looks so boring. <laughs> like, this just looks really boring to do. I think, like, yeah, and part of what I struggled with at first was that I found it boring, but I think it's also because it's a platform, but it's also very much a puzzle game as you're yeah, playing it. Yeah, it's totally. like, okay, yeah. this is a challenge. This Just this last checkpoint is a challenge that I need to solve. Like, it's a puzzle. Mm. I need to overtake this guy, shoot his ally, drop him into the fire pit to kill him kind of thing. So, like, I, like I, I don't want to discredit it for trying to be interesting in those ways. Um, but you can see all the... Yeah, you can see the puzzle in front of you and you're grey boxing it, essentially, versus, yeah. like, yeah. But on the, 2D, on the 2D thing, it's like, okay, so in this puzzle, there's a guy up around the corner that reacted to me making too much noise, I wasn't sneaking around enough, and ran off his, his normal point. Uh, so I'm going to throw a proximity mine up to him. And the only way to do it is to hook around the bend because if I throw it, it goes on the 2D plane that I'm on, not sticks to the plane of the game. Yeah, so it just wild. throws it off the map. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's not like I can throw it up what? there. I throw it just it disappears like in the game. He, he throws it in a perfect straight line from where he is angled in that moment. Yeah. You walk forward, the game turns. So it doesn't land yeah. on the path. Yeah, it just right. goes off, which is like... Makes sense logically, but not the uh, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it it's just yeah. super broken in the game. Yeah. And this level bugged out so many times for me. Is this uh, your gameplay? This isn't my gameplay, okay. no. But I'm suffering. I suffered as much as this person did. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there were just like like game-breaking glitches of like restart checkpoint, restart checkpoint. I would overtake a dude. He's going to get sniped so hard. Oh, he dodged oh. it. Um, he, he, you overtake a dude and he, he just got locked into a direction. Whatever button I press next, it got locked into, yeah, that kind right. of stuff. And it's like, when I'm trying to solve these puzzles in a like it's a hard game by design and i don't think that's bad either but when it's hard and bugged it's like <laughs> those two don't uh, infuriating, yeah. yeah do you and think it gets slow this is purely speculative but yeah. do we think this might have had something to do with the the ps like making it a free game from launch like uh or oh, you mean that you, you think that they made it free because it's Bad? bad having some hiccups maybe yeah, okay. i don't know I'm, I'm purely just like going out on a limb and being like yeah it's it would this have done as well if it was paid up i don't know like there's so much there's a lot of polish in I'm the totally cutscenes and stuff it's like there must be a different team behind like yeah doing the story stuff because the story stuff is fun like animated story stuff it's gross mm. and it's like it's really it's quite pretty and the uh direction and dialogue are good uh, it's just... Is it Team 17? Well, why am I thinking them? No. No, I don't, I don't think so. No, it's... um. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll find it. Um, but but anyway, like I don't have much more to say about it. I played 90 minutes of it and just got really frustrated with it. <clears throat> I think if you have a love for Oddworld, you might be able to see through the stuff that I can't. Just to play another... like shiny mm. new odd world game for free uh for free if you got playstation well, plus that's the thing i'm gonna and play playstation now. 5 because it's out yes. on playstation oh, 4 but you see. don't get the playstation it's only for the playstation 5 version oh okay well then i'm talking uh, out my ass it's but more, like i think okay. i think it's more like something for playstation 5 people as opposed to yeah, yeah an right. odd world yeah i'm totally picking this up because i can get it for free because i want to check all these things but if it was yeah i wouldn't pay for this at this stage like yeah yeah um, it's, it does have some deep systems in it and it's like i in my like in, like I unlocked the third item that I could carry of what looks like there's 12 or something that mm. you can unlock so there's like there's going to be some depth and some progression and and it's fun when the the horde of uh the whatever the creature race is the abes are trying to escape and you're like trying to protect them from the, mm. the other things on the map it's mm. like that part plays out really well but most of it is frustrating and slow and bu and bugged um but yeah it's free <laughs> so no <laughs> no complaints for the cost. Um, yeah, nothing lost. Uh, yeah, except for the cost of a PS5 and PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, and the other thing I played, which I really, really liked, was Lost Words. William, help me. Uh, beyond the Page. Beyond the Page. He didn't even give him the courtesy of a cut to angle when he <laughs> helped you out there. <laughs> He's, he's <laughs> off, so it's fine. I figured that would be the case. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, Lost Words Beyond the Page, uh, written by Rihanna Pratchett, uh, released on Stadia last year, uh, so it's been played by four people. Me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and me. <laughs> Beautifully uh, uh, Well played, Rihanna Pratchett. Uh, it is very, very, very cool. Uh, it's playing through basically like it feels like you're getting read a story to go to, like a childhood story to go to bed. Mm. It plays out in these it's journal sequences bed. where you uh, you kind of are hearing about the life of the uh, narrator, uh, and the narrator is a very creative young person who's like tells you about their life and how they they like to explore the world in creative ways and starts to write this fantasy story and the fantasy story is the video gamier version of the thing you play here so this is very much about just like interacting with words dragging things around like we'll see here that they fall through it's because they need to finish the sentence and then there's mum and you got to drop it in place and that becomes a platform for you to play through this little area as well yeah right so it's just like it's it's never a particularly taxing game and that's really good because you're just listening to the story mm. it's beautifully narrated uh the writing is really 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 good um and it, like it, it feels it feels like a simple story but it, the execution of it is really sweet um and will if you jump through till you start seeing more graphic-y style stuff uh, it's probably like, yeah, so here. And, th and this is where she's realised that in order to deal with the things that she's journaling about, you know, the things that are affecting her in real life, she's created this fantasy world where her character gets to fight these things oh, right. or combat the things with, with her own powers in this fantasy land. And that, uh, like, culminates in her being this, like, wizard that has a book of magic words. And if you drag the magic word out of the book... Uh, you can you can use that power on the world. So, for example, like she needs to repair a broken bridge. She has the word repair, which is like one of her spells, mm. and you just drag the word repair out of her novel, out of her book, her spell book, and put it over it, and it will like put the bridge back together in front of you. <laughs> and then you can continue platforming. It's like it's like a it's like someone put a GUI interface over Barbara's Barbara is you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, to I was thinking mm. of that game the whole time I was playing this. This is much, much simpler than Barbara is you in terms of like trying to be a puzzle. difficult puzzle yeah. game. <clears throat> it's just really sweet, and all the ideas are really well executed. Uh, and it's like twenty something bucks, and I think a four hour game. Uh, and it's it's worth it for the story alone, mm. and it's very much a story game. Like you are playing it to just mm. hear the narration kind of wash over you. There's a really nice, uh, like here we'll see her use the word rise, which is her first spell, so she can interact with things to get them out of the way. Yeah, cool. Uh, and it, it's like that's as complex as it's. It's almost got like a scribble Nazi vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. God, scribble Nazi. Um, <laughs> does it use up the word? No, so there are some, yeah, so th that's written into the story as well. Like you, you meet the, uh, the wise old uh, uh, mage. Oh, there you go, rise has been used twice. Yeah. <clears throat> rise is a word that you have at your disposal at all times and you'll get some that do that. And then there are other ones that are more contextual that are like, oh, for this part of the game, we want the game to play out like this. So you have like extinguish to put out a fire. Yeah, okay. And it's kind of like a spell that you, they say that it's like, it's very poetically put into the game of like, uh, you know, some words will stay with you and others uh, mm. like a fleeting as they drift off into the uh, with the spell or whatever. <laughs> and so it's like you you spend that contextually, and otherwise you can solve puzzles with the things you know you are you can use. You mentioned the writing's lovely, and obviously it plays into being a really lovely looking game. Is this, and I don't want to say it's a bad thing, it's just being used a lot recently. Is this telling a story that is a <laughs> uh, that is covering a much more I'm not going to say sinister but like a much more deeper emotional storyline that's going underneath because I was saying like Spirit Fair and Marquette all these games <coughs> coming out more recently that are like to really effectively telling um, more grown up and sometimes really yeah, powerful I, stories but not to <coughs> say if it doesn't that's also I, really lovely <laughs> I don't think it's like as like spiritual mm. it's definitely like younger adult focused I think uh, it's like about sexy werewolves <laughs> Sexy werewolves. Uh, like in the next fantasy, she comes back nude in a mech suit. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was convinced. I was coming along. Oh, was I? I was like, God, what a fucking twist! The delivery, <laughs> I mean, the delivery was a plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
no, it's like it's like you know sh she has a good relationship with her family and she has family troubles. Okay. And so that's that's the this is her escape is writing this novel which plays out as a video game. <laughs> um, yeah, Fiona Kell in the chat. Is this game going to make me sad? Like that's kind of. I don't. I, was... I don't think. I don't think so because to me, like it is. It is designed to be s sad, but I think it's like. I don't think it will make you sad because it's a story that, like, it's a tale as old as time, and it's more about the execution of the tale than, mm -hmm. like, like, yeah. I, I'm I'm pushing yeah. that to be a good thing because I'm like, if if this game is all about her and oh she's in a coma the whole time, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it doesn't take that cliche, but it takes like a very like well told, like yeah, okay, well used story. <laughs> sure, uh, and and which makes it relatable, I think. Totally, and again, he has amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that either. It's not like a twi It's not yeah. like a. It's not like a twist mm. setup. It's just like. Here's a young person who's dealing with family stuff uh, and there's not much more to it than that except how sweet it plays out. And again, how well, how beautifully it's written. Mm. And, and in the ways of like, like there's the written and performed stuff and then there's like the author's note because she's journaling a lot of this stuff. So mm. she'll tell the story and she'll also be like, have another little note and it comes up in a different pen. Like she's had a, a different thought later that mm. she's at, like an amendment yeah, to it. Cool. It's just really like really beautifully put together. It's not the best video game, but it's a very nice story. Well told with a video game mm. attached to it. You needed this after Abe's, didn't you? <laughs> I definitely, uh, yeah, this was very, very, very refreshing to play after Abe's. With <laughs> Between this and it takes two, you've had like a whimsical, Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. yeah, cool. Uh, did you finish it? No, I played half of it, so I'm okay, like two great. hours yeah. into the full. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. awesome, cool. Angus, I have had my fair share of whimsy this Ooh. week as well. Uh, as I mentioned up the top, I did some shame shaving, uh, and hearing that you'd cucked my Ori. I went back and I finished Ori and the Will of the Wisps. There you go. So that's all the motivation I need. <laughs> if anyone gets in the way of my game pile of shame, I will beat them to it. I'm a weird person. Um, I I started this again. I started this again from the I start. I was so apologetic when I, I did know. it. And he's coming out going, fuck you. <laughs> I finished Prey four times. <laughs> <laughs> I bought Bethesda. <laughs> uh, I, I want to jump in here and say I too for finished Ori and the Will. Yeah, Lips. cool. So. Uh, yeah, so I started again from the start um, and I sort of ploughed through that early section. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we put uh, a bunch of games out that we said we were going to play that we never got around to finishing. This was one of mine. And the reason was I got stuck at a certain point that it seems a lot of people got stuck on in we terms of where the game was going in a direction uh, by, the, by the time you need to turn a water wheel to drain a flood, uh, sorry, to drain a swamp. And um, yeah, got through that. Had to start from the start just to get my head around the controls. Love how this game plays. Love how it feels. Um, share everyone's positive notes about how it just becomes like second nature. You're doing everything just so fluidly. Control's so great. Um, yeah, moved past that point and got to what you were talking about where you start to actually go off into different directions to collect the wisps mm -hmm. to reach your ultimate goal. Um, I would say I enjoyed that they took a different direction, which we mentioned, which is not that Metroidvania style of move in a direction, get an ability, open up a shortcut. It feels less clever in that sense. You've got a hub zone, you move off into corners of... It feels like Dark Souls 2 to Dark Souls 1. You go off, you get an ability, and you warp back, essentially. You don't... Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You I don't... Between, yeah. It's not a big, intricate world. It, it feels less linear in that sense that you get an option to choose which direction you want to go at one point. Um, Fucking beautifully designed. Game. Oh, everything about it just moves so <laughs> wonderfully. Funny. And Yeah, aware this has been out for a long time now. I was playing it on Game Pass, so hopefully a lot of people out there have finished it or have returned to it. Uh, yeah, and really enjoyed that. I will say there are some things in it that I... Uh, on completion found didn't gel with me uh the reliance on combat more in this one i find the combat really messy in it visually it's hard to keep track of ori um while it's all happening it's very like sparky and f there's a lot flickering around and i didn't love that what, there's what um because uh, i'm just trying to think back to when i was playing it what um like sort of moves and abilities were you relying on i was kind of using the sword attack with a hammer which is like a heavy and you can kind of do a combo yeah, and that sort right. of thing i know there's a spear and there's a, there's mm. a bow because i there's... get very stuck in particular sets of things totally and then i'm like unwilling to budge from that and I'm like why is this but if so you hard? do it can like well, be the, yeah. it can be the key to that fight that totally. like, oh, I 100% like I bring it up because a thing they have in this which I don't recall from the first Ori is the boss fights uh, there's 
two, uh, there's three, maybe four really solid boss fights. Mm. And I remember from the first game, the majority of the big conflicts you had were escape challenges. You got to an area and you had to escape, and it was a platforming boss, essentially. Whereas here, it is a traditional boss. It's a creature with a health bar, multi-stages, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I found them just a bit painful. The hit detection on where the boss is, they're often huge lumbering things that are like moving in and out of the background. So trying to distinguish, kind of like the Abe's Odyssey thing, where I'm, because you're taking damage if you touch them but touching them means kind of like hitting the nose but not mm. the shoulder yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there were some bits that we're talking about the frog the frog uh, there's also <laughs> there's the frog there's the spider, the spider. there's also uh, what did she swallow to catch the spider there you go the frog to yeah. catch the there's yeah uh, the cat. shriek at the end the major boss so they, they always felt difficult and there was so much going on visually which I love to look at but Combat was never a strength to this game for me, and I preferred the platforming. I preferred the, the race runs, all that sort of stuff. It's interesting because I, 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 when I was playing it, I was actually I was thinking this feels like it has less reliant on combat than it did the last game. Mm. You could be right with the boss fight thing, and I, and it's been a while since I, like I played Blind Forest oh, the yeah, first anyway. week that I was on Good Game, and I haven't played it since then. Um, so I could be wrong with if, that. But if Ori and the Blind Forest was a uh, Man, yeah. What would it, its name be? Uh, it would be Chad, and he would play water polo. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what a throwback. The um, uh, but I yeah, I certainly thought that more of the game was built around like at least the the sort of non boss fight stuff was built around platforming. In this one, it felt like I was like I basically just had my normal attack mm. and that's all I ever used. Like yeah. I never unlocked the spear. I didn't unlock most things. I unlocked wow. uh, all the movement stuff, but yeah. like yeah. apparently yeah. the spear is one that's quite powerful for bosses. So I think knowing that that could have made them a little easier. But I but hated I did regions. hate the boss fights. I yeah. did go like like particularly the the second one in the swamp. It was it was just very frustrating and I really hated the last boss fight. Yeah, me too. Um the last phase, particularly the last boss fight, has this like system where where the boss will like swoop in from sides of the screen and it gives you maybe half a second of knowing where the boss is going to be coming in from, mm. but you actually have no ability to be able to move that quickly. Like, I, so I, I was like, yeah. I, you can do the jump to the thing and you can propel yourself and you can throw a thing and like, you have all that stuff. But I found that I never, it, it was just like, the only way I got through that last one was I just got the perfect like, space that I was in at the perfect time and managed to just like fake my way through that stuff and yeah. that was very and I feel that versus those racing challenges which again from the first one where you're escaping a flooding tree and all that kind of stuff that and one sucks do, as well but yes you yeah, do yeah, a yeah. lot of it in this one still in those moments and those are my favourite because and I'm particularly because like, it's built around movement it like totally, the game yeah. is yeah. and I find yeah so the combat stuff didn't really deal with me the other thing I'll say briefly and I talked to Nick about this before is that there's a part of the ending story wise which I'm not going to spoil but I will say uh, felt very I was very unfulfilled by a section of the story revolving around one of the characters it felt like there was a lot of uh, emphasis on this character who then gets a very gets sort of shorted by the end of the story and given a very miserable ending which is fine the whole game is about death and rebirth and all that sort of stuff so I wasn't upset about it being sad but it was like they didn't give it the amount of time and uh sort of credit that it had been building itself up to with other cutscenes. i'm sorry i'm being vague about this but i think I feel you can like, say who what? sorry yeah it is the main antagonist of the game yeah. which is a <clears> big <throat> another big kind of owl and uh it's sort of deformed and it's gone through all these like there's a cutscene of it being born as a baby owl and being rejected so it's showing the trajectory of some sort of arc now that arc could be it is forgiven and dies and mm. or it learns to love again or it does but they just kind of stop it because they realize they have to tell more story with Ori and the other characters and not only do they stop it they do it with an absolute punch to the heart mm. which then not being long enough don't it didn't stay in that time in that area to show me what it was exploring enough felt just like if you're gonna make me sad go all out don't just like leave that scene too early yeah, so okay. it was a real upsetting part of it for me because i really enjoyed those twists especially after the first game itself i don't think i'm spoiling anything here had another really lovely ending where it was sort of basically showing that the antagonist was being protective over something horrible that had happened to it so there was an arc um and again i i didn't want them to do the same thing but just give it the same amount of time and and effort which yeah uh, I think that's fair. Before I respond to that, a massive thank you to Jess, 47111 for the gifted subs, and to Andrew W, who did it before as well. Thank you Champions. very much. Thank you. Uh, 
I uh, um yeah I uh, I mean we spoke about this but I think uh, I totally know what you mean. For me, it was like it gave me enough to understand what was going on. Um, I think that the, that character reverted back to a state a- as opposed to necessarily learning a lesson, just sort of went back yeah. and that was enough for me. That scene of it as a oh. child was awful in terms of like very emotionally <laughs> affecting and like that's what these games are great at doing. Um, but I am... Um, uh, uh, overall, I loved I loved the button that it put on this. How it ties into the first game, yeah. like the like the like uh, the game. The these two games thematically tie very well together. Um, and uh, I was really happy with how that story closes out. But I did have a moment when I was playing the game and I was doing uh, escape the um this like sand worm thing, and I was playing it and going, this is like. I was in that flow state of video game player and it was that thing of like, oh, it's funny. I take for granted how good I am at video games that if like, you know, if my partner walked into the room and I handed the control, she would just like have no idea what to do here. And I was like, just when you find that rhythm with a game like this, where you move with using so many tool sets, there are so many different things that you can do. The game, how that game teaches you to incorporate these things and telegraphs them together through visual cues that you've been training the whole way. Like that, that sandworm boss is one of the only that has like multiple hits you can take from it. So I did the same thing where it's like most of the time it's and you reset and it's like oh and you keep doing it until you get it right whereas this one you could take hits and keep going so I had the same feeling I'm like I'm amazing and it's like <laughs> if it had killed me on one hit I'd be smashing that controller furiously yeah um, the other thing I'll just say about the characters and stuff is that I think the previous game or the first half of this one had lots of moments where in between uh, checkpoints you would see what the other characters were doing mm. and how it was all happening and the story was unfolding the second half of this game while really fun as a, from a gameplay stance is a bit divorced from all of that and so then at the end when it sort of piles all the story back in I was a little bit like again why I didn't really care about the characters as much as I had in the first game or his family kind of get fridged they just turn up at the end and it's like oh yeah they're still here whereas I remember in the first one they were a lot cleverer about how they integrated it but again it's a the great sequel a really wonderful feeling game to play and everyone should at some stage play this or the first one I'm really happy that I went back yeah me too like I I am like oh like I smashed it off and I just went yeah god like how this is so my kind of game it's kind of your kind of game as well like how did this just how did i not (laughs) that stupid water wheel if it wasn't that stupid water wheel we all would have finished this game well i'm I'm past that so i don't really have an excuse to not go back now yeah yeah it wasn't even like it's not that i didn't enjoy the water wheel section it was just that it was really exhausting yeah you get to the end of it and you're like god no it is it is literally like that's why i I swear everyone just gave up then because they were like yeah i've I know what this game's doing now, and it's like, no, the game hasn't started doing the thing that the yeah. game is doing yet. Yeah. It's doing what the last game did. <laughs> At, up until that point, it's already 1.5, yeah. and then it becomes already yeah, totally. 2 once you start being able to get the other abilities. But yeah, it was really lovely. Glad I went back to it. Um, just quickly, the other two things I've been playing. Uh, these are some, uh, again, another older game. But I'm back into Ring Fit Adventure. This is a bit <laughs> strange. I got this mid-COVID. Uh, and uh, Sorry, mid-COVID? Mid, uh, like... Um, like lockdown last year. How did and you get a copy? I waited ages. Like I think I was on a list and it wow. they finally came out. I got sent it and I felt like I had just been sent gold the lottery. because yeah, <laughs> people were just like could not get it. I don't know. If I, this I was want... like GameStop stock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't oh, know the if hotness. It's, if it's more available now or if they finally got them back onto the store shelves. I have had it for ages. I got it when I was doing my running streams because I tried to incorporate it into some charity runs. It was a bit difficult. It's been sitting there mocking me since then. I decided to get <laughs> back in me. <laughs> uh, like an Ori in the Will of the Wisps, I thought I'd finally go back and shave this off my pile. Um, and yeah, I'm back into this. I'm playing about an hour of it a day, um, but I'm also playing it on You're the playing top. playing an hour a day? Yeah. For how many stage? days? Uh, the last four days. Okay, that's four hours. Um, but I'm also playing it on the toughest difficulty. This is a humble brag, but I was like, if I want to get you know, any results from this kind of thing, I know it's also incorporated for like younger audiences or casual players. I'm like, there is a difficulty slider. Basically, that difficulty slider just translates to how many reps of each exercise mm. you do when you hit these mini boss battles. Yeah, and so, you, you calibrate it to your um, to your own personal ability as well. So it's like, at the start with the ring, it's like, push it in as hard as mm. you possibly can. And you're like, oh, all right, challenge. Look at that ring press. Yeah, and then it's like, 
great. That's how pr- like hard you need to press it every single time now. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh shit. And then yeah, <laughs> that the number of reps. When we're not seeing the challenges here, but like you do these things where it's like you pick a bunch of exercises, do a heap of reps, and that translates to hits that take down a little creature that you got. It's, I have this game. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, oh, okay. I'm, I describe. Sorry, I know. I know you were telling the audience, but yeah. I describe it as like you're you're uh, playing an adventure game. This isn't my footage, by the way. So uh, this person. No, I was clearly say, struggling. Yeah. Maybe you should turn down that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're playing through these kind of like running sections where you're kind of, uh, you know, running on the spot. And because for people who don't have uh, or have, haven't seen much about it, it's like you have one of the Joy-Cons in a strap around your leg. Mm. So it can measure not only your running, it, it measures just exactly how high you're bringing your knees up. So it will tell you mm. if you're not lifting your knees high enough. And it'll also tell you if you're not squatting low enough. Yeah, it does and good is, form check. Yeah. And this is, again, based on the calibration from the start. But then and you got what, a papaya recipe. Yeah. But so then, it's still a very Japanese game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you make smoothies and stuff to yeah, okay. get yourself, like health back. But like also, um, yeah, when, you, when you're sort of going through these things, you go into these like Pokemon style battles. Yeah. And that's when you start to do all of the like traditional gym exercises and they're like you unlock more of them as you go um i'm surprised at how much more game there is like this is someone else's footage so looking through all the stages like there's an adventure mode that's yeah, what i'm heaps. playing through as a way and it is it, it serves as a really nice distraction from the workout you're doing um but yeah as i said now i'm doing for sit-ups it's like i'll do 35 sit-ups four times to kill one creature versus i've seen people who are like oh setting it in an easy mode is four sit-ups three times to kill that same creature. Mm. So I've stupidly dived off the deep end and I'm like, well, I can't come back from here. So I'm just going to see if I like speed my uh, results from there, which will not happen. But also like, uh, are you, it sounds like you're conflicted because basically what you're doing is like, um, five sit-ups, come on. Like (laughs) you want to finish the game, No, but 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 what you're doing is technically the point of the game, which is like, being able to do enough exercise that you can handle that actually pushes you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's, yeah, as I mean, that's my goal. So whether or not I'll play through to the... I didn't realise there's so much adventure mode ahead in terms of, like, the outfits, the bosses, mm-hmm. the levels. There's like heaps. And you unlock tons. exercises as you go. Because yeah. the first time I started... Like, the first few sessions I did of it, I was, like, a little bit bored because it's, like, I'd only unlocked, like, a squat and a couple of other things. So, sorry, yeah, here's what you're saying here where it's, like, yeah. each one does damage to different creatures and, yeah... But yeah, I feel like um, once you start unlocking a, a broader range of exercises, then it's like, okay, I don't need to do like four different versions of a squat in a row. <laughs> yeah. It's a strange one actually that it has the least amount of variety at the beginning. So you could get yeah. bored of it versus yeah. like they should show you there are a heap of exercises, they're, but they're warming you up. They're trying them. to introduce you to exercise slowly. But it's a weird thing to have <laughs> gamified, which is the unlocks that I want to get are different exercises. And <laughs> like I would say as someone who likes doing more intense cardio and stuff, some of them like a tree pose while very different difficult to do and really good for my core which is what I want to try and do more of it's like there are some in there which is like overhead press which if you're doing 40 of them it's mm. a real burn mm. like you're in uh, the ring's thing. really cool it's amazing it's a really it's, great yeah. piece the, of tech it's the first <laughs> fitness game I think that is offered some form of resistance yeah and I think that's really key because previously I think with things like the balance board and other kind of um you know even like the xbox Connect stuff. Connect stuff. Like, yeah. none of it was really able to hold you accountable mm. in a full <laughs> way. Yeah. Uh, you know, either you could just not be, lo- like, moving your legs or, you, you know, it, it just wasn't, like, able... Or, 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 you, were, or you were doing it wrong. Or like, and, it wrong. and not, yeah. like, cheating, but, like, you not actually know. getting yeah. a workout yeah. where yeah. you're supposed to be. The Joy-Cons are so sensitive and so, like, their gyroscopic capability is, like, so advanced that it's really, like, if you're not... If you're not pushing or pulling that ring as hard as you did when you calibrated it, it's like you're not pushing hard enough. And you're like, shut up, game. My arms are tired, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and if you don't squat low enough, it, it absolutely tells you. And then, and your, and your um, uh, attack will not be as effective. Mm. Like, it, uh, you only get the full force of the attack if you squat low enough. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's actually a really clever way they've done it. That is, like, if you do go, oh, I'm just getting tired. I'm going to lower my leg a bit different. Yeah. It's like, cool. You'll do ten hits instead of. 30 and you're like well this is going to take longer now so yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. It does and then you can, and you, can fail, you can fail the fight and then you just have to keep doing it until you win yeah, yeah cool which is actually like 
not how exercise works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you do nine, uh, like 49 minutes and they go, you didn't make it a 50, you're going to have to do another 50. <laughs> um, but yeah, I picked this up again because like we've gone daylight savings. I'm like, I like running and I'm like, sometimes I will find myself, it's like dark. I'm like, oh, I should do some exercise. So it's like moving into winter, I thought might be a good thing to get back into again. I, r- I really like it and it totally gave me a good workout. Um, the one thing that holds me back from, I feel like really getting into it and it's just a mental thing, is that I I don't like the idea of getting sweaty in my, like, gaming space. My gaming <laughs> yeah, space yeah. Is, is being, like, carpeted floors yep. and, like, I'm inside a, like, a, you know, a, like a bedroom, basically. Yeah. Like, all this stuff where I go, like, oh, generally, like, I would go for a run where I can get gross. Yep. Uh, but when I'm doing it and I'm doing it, like, at night, it was it was, like... I would think, I, I think I kept thinking of it like a video game as opposed to a workout. So it would be like, okay, I'm going to play a bit of like PlayStation, whatever. And then it's time for some Wii Fit. And then I would be like, okay, well, like, I guess I'll get changed out of whatever I'm wearing. And, get, and then I was like, well, now I have to have a shower so that I could continue playing video games yeah. <laughs> rather than like, oh, I'm just going for a run for an hour after I wake yeah, up. Yeah, you can't think about it as playing video games. You have to think about it as like, I need to do some exercise. It today. is exercise, yeah, yeah. I've been using yeah. it to like round up my like working from home at the moment, a lot of us. Like I use it at like five o'clock. It's like, cool, now I'm going to go and do an hour of this. Uh, I'm just in shorts and a fan in uh, in my living room. Oh, some people so, just passed out in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It's like, I don't want to be... I don't Like <laughs> exercise gear in a gym where it's fully air yeah. on and there's rubber floors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas I am on carpet, but I've got a decent amount of room, a big TV, a fan that is in my room all the time that's, like, really strong, and I'm just in a backwards hat and shorts doing this. And, like, you're right, that does come... I'm, I'm saying yeah, it because, say it like... Again. He's painting a picture. Yeah, he yeah. Is. Oh. he's painting a picture that has about six more abs than he does. There you go. <laughs> and I'll get there. I'll get and he started one. that fire from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yep, I will get swole abs, chat. Hold me to it. Uh, and finally, sorry to keep going on... Um, oh, but I also dabbled in a VR game that popped up the other day that I was really intrigued to play, which is called Hand Physics Lab. Really boring title, but essentially uh, this was recently added to the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2, which is the forward-facing cameras do full hand tracking. No game has really taken to showing it off in its best uh, light, and neither has this because it's not a game. It's a WarioWare-style lab where basically uh, a table will bring you a bunch of obstacles, uh, a bunch of uh, puzzles to complete using hand tracking. So I'm not using any controllers for this, uh, which is an amazing feeling. Uh, it's just it's one of these rare occasions where I'm doing something that just feels incredibly unique and I've never had an experience like it. I love that you see your little skelly hands. It's great, yeah. (laughs) It's like, it's one of these things that like, the first thing is press a button and you do it and it is just a surreal feeling to reach forward with your It's almost like a a tech demo. It is. This is what I was going to say. It's like, this isn't so much a game as like a great thing to have on your VR device if you're the kind of person that likes to pick it up and show it off to people and show it off in its best light. (laughs) Can I just say that, um... That is almost all VR is. It is. <laughs> it's literally like, I have VR and I'm see? going to show you some things that are very good to show off in VR and then the person can play through them all. And they're like, so what So what else is there? It's like, that's it. Well, the- I only have things on here that are good to show people who've never used VR. Yeah. But if you've used VR before, I got I nothing, got nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like the other game that has like a 10 minute cutscene in a RPG bit at the start. You're like, totally. you don't want to play this. You want to play this. Um, and it's heaps of fun uh, for what it is. Like it's doing dumb little things here, like just finger painting. Um, and it looks ridiculous. But as I said, it feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very strange That's sensation. Cool. Um, and <laughs> you got paint in your hands, up. <laughs> well, it's 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 grossing me out a little pain? bit. Pain, pain, draw pain. Well done. Uh, well done. And, and are, you, are you are you in um, a backwards cap and just shorts? I'm in just shorts yeah. doing this. Yeah. Uh, there are, as it goes on, it's quite <laughs> slow. <laughs> you have to be really exact. Um, there's little, like, as I said... Oh, man, I wish I had footage of you playing. Like, I was considering <laughs> filming <laughs> myself, like, delicately placing my fingers around. Um, <laughs> Will, if you can help me out here, we'll try and find... There are some things it does which are absolutely amazing when they happen the first time. Um, and if we can find a clip, there are some really clever 
ones. Um, that laser one across the top. This loop, this took me so freaking long to do. I will say, <laughs> not having the one-to-one -one controllers, it does wig out. It is not yeah, perfect totally. tech. And so when it wigs out, it does break your brain a little bit and makes you a bit upset. Like, it is a real level of... Fall? <laughs> like, it does get really upsetting because it almost feels a bit like you're drunk. It feels a bit like... <laughs> it, it's, it's like having a bit of, like... What, what, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean when your hands go red? Um, that's it not sensing that well. So sometimes oh, the cameras okay. aren't seeing it um, that great. And these are just the Oculus, the standard Oculus controllers, the Rift. No, these the are Quest. no controllers. These are what? So these are no controllers. Hands. Oh, the hand, right. So okay. these are actually your hands. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. So I maybe didn't make it clear at the start. So recently, uh, the Quest now just uses the cameras at the front and it, you can use your hands to just do menus oh, and pinches. Oh, I thought the, okay. I remember, right. okay, I, know you could do pinch, I know you could do pinch things. Mm. Yeah, the but start. they've had the ability to fully track them. And no, I think, as I said, there's one wizard game that's like casting spells and blah, blah, blah. It's not great. This is, I put my controllers on the couch. I'm purely using my hands. Hence, I'm using them in quite a dexterous manner. So this um, is really... Really, you just yeah. tickling yeah, with those fingies. Um, those phalanges just stroking things. That is real yeah. Angus Ronald phalange. Just, just in shorts. Unbelievable. Um, but again, sorry, Will, you might have to... There's a red laser level. You're stroking level. it so gently. It's really hard. Um, maybe it was at like 20, 20 minutes. Some of them are cool. This is like driving a car by like pinching to accelerate and wiggling your finger to steer. Like it's like a this, nipple. <laughs> it's so strange. Just a little, I drew a pocket -y. A little, a little tweak. Nice. Um, and again, I just need to illustrate this one point and then we can... No, it's funny that you are tickling things. <laughs> yeah, true. Sure. I don't think we care about. Okay, well, I'll describe it so when you see this one. So this is messed up. I want to watch you to see what happens here. There's a laser that when I do that, oh. my hand comes off. My oh. hand is still responding to oh. the hand that I'm using. Oh. But it's also still yeah, tracking your arm. Correct. Ew. So I can pick up my oh. hand and, and I can wiggle my own fingers. It is such a messed up feeling. Yeah. And it is uh, amazing. Cut I will, it again. I will cut say, it again. then I have to cut both hands to land in the bowl. Oh. So I've got to rest that one there. Uh. And suddenly, both my hands are just have cut off. And I will say, there is, there is, that's the next Even though it's a much smaller subset, there are still people in the chat who are just getting so <laughs> Oh, that's so Maybe fucked. it's the one after oh, this, gross. Will. There's one where you shake your own hand um, that it's mirroring. Here you go. So this is just me being like, okay, this is mirroring it's my hand. Doing this. Oh, wow. So oh, like, cool. I went to shake my own hand and I was like, this is so strange. <laughs> <laughs> But again, I was. I, I, I play Ring Fit on hard mode, I'll have you know. <laughs> and the challenge oh, is to shake your own hand. Oh, 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 that's cool. So uh, I think there are a How lot. How much is this? Uh, I think it's like on the cheaper end of the VR game. So Oh, you've uh, got that thing. Uh, yeah, so I and don't think it's, it's a full priced game. Um, I imagine it is the uh, Oculus Quest 2. A little better with the hand tracking and Possibly. stuff because this is like a driver update for the fifteen West bucks. One. Yeah, so it's fifteen bucks. So it's, yeah. it's worth having to show it. off to friends how it works. Um, and as I said, free. It, I would say it takes a bit too long. There are so many like arrange the blocks uh, or um, like <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the wait, wiggle. Every can, you, time. can we turn the sound up on this one for a second, Pete, just to hear? <laughs> the music is hilarious. There's all these royalty-free songs. Uh, I think there's probably like hundreds of these challenges because they just keep throwing them at you, WarioWare style, so and cool. it's very easy to just keep going because they're all relatively easy. Mm. I look. I would like to see a few more of them that do feel like that do something interesting like that, cutting off your hand kind of thing. There is a sandbox mode as well where you can play with heaps of uh, other little toys. Like, give me a quick wild scrub, will, and then we'll go off this game. But like, it must be so weird, like because when you have a controller in your hand and you're picking something up, you have usually like like um, the feedback of pulling a trigger or something yep. to be like, I've grabbed this and now I'm holding it and now I'm letting it go. But this is like, you're picking up nothing. <laughs> yeah, and that is the disconnect that will always be there and doesn't yeah. feel great. But when it does... Well, work, it doesn't It doesn't have to always be there. Uh, like, yeah, not... not I don't think this is what's going to happen, but you, there is, like, if you had, like, a glove on totally. that had the sort of, like, PlayStation... Tactile kind of yeah. haptic, haptic feedback, feedback thing yeah. that when it detects you, it starts putting, like, resistance in there, then that's that's where it actually gets, like, it feels like you're holding yeah, it. It'd be yeah, great cool. if we get there eventually. But, yeah, as I said, at the moment, as one of the tech demos to have on a Quest, uh, Quest 2, or I'm sure the other devices, if you have them, it is a really fun one yeah, to have cool. that uh, is worth showing off to people. And, yeah, <laughs> it was a heap of fun. There's some really intricate stuff in there, so it's a cool <laughs> way to show off the tech yeah nice. hand physics lab yep terrible name but very cool looking game totally william mm. you're up 
We've played so many games this week. Yeah. We Talk I, to us. I played one that was like two hours long. Uh, if you take all the things that you've learned about like hand physics and stuff and throw them out the window, that's, that's what this is. <laughs> um, it's called In Rays of the Light, another terrible name. Uh, when the credits rolled, all the letters, I mean, this isn't the credits, all the letters uh, bar the letter R were capitaled, which was very disconcerting. I um, hate that. It's very gross. But basically, it's a walking sim. Uh, there's puzzles throughout it that you kind of have to... You need to track down objects. The whole game is dark. It's very hard to say anything. Um, but uh, you just track down... And is, is this to, some kind of post-apocalyptic situation? So... You, you're holding a pipe and the I am world looks very derelict. And, and I got very excited because I thought there might be combat. But it's actually a pipe that's only ever used to undo, like, three planks... <laughs> That are on a door. It's a real life game. Yeah. Like when I pick up a pipe in real life, I'm not like, I'm going to hit someone with someone this. Someone it's like actually yeah. like, I need to pry open something. I've and got this for a reason. someone biroed a pen onto that television. That's what, yeah, it's very bizarre. So like there's puzzles like this what? where, I, I, I don't know if that plan specifically, oh, yeah. but there's like three numbers you need Sorry, to I'm unlock nice. a safe. And so throughout the, the map, there's like pictures that have numbers on it. But, and this is where the game starts to just forget what it wants to do. <laughs> there's also just numbers on doors and there's like numbers on the outside so it's like you'll get like 500 different numbers and you're like one of these could be the number I need uh, so the puzzles are very confusing similar to uh, At Dead at Night you stumble upon a puzzle and be like what do I need to do here and the puzzle won't make sense until you find something that's like halfway across this map mm. yeah um, okay Whoa, uh, faster yeah, I, and yeah. I eventually found the run button. Uh, the run button <laughs> it doesn't get taught, but it's like left trigger, which what? seems logical. <laughs> um, this is from it is from a Russian dev as well, uh, Sergei Noskov, who made Seventh Sector, which was that like cyberpunk oh, ball yeah, game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know there is some like some talent behind this, but it's not here uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> for a lot of it. Oh, like, scathing. I, look, look, this is a very strange game. The, the, the point where I knew that I needed to just get a guide out was when I got to some doors and there was five doors and you had to open them in order, but there was no order given. It was a and there was a note that said like, oh, it, it, sometimes you have to open the doors in a certain order and it just never you told just you. You just brute forced it. Yeah. Well, no, I looked up a guide, and yeah, the guy right. was like, <laughs> this door, then that door, then this door, and there's like, anyway. What are you playing this on? This is on uh, PS5. This is What? The, this is the PS5 remastered edition uh, of a game from 2012. Oh. 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 You should have led with that. Yeah. That makes more sense. I was yeah. like, what? Like, <laughs> why are you playing? What, like, I, I still want to know. Why did you, why did why I did play you this? choose it, to play this? It just came there's up three on, things on the PS5. Yeah. <laughs> it came up on my radar and it was a two hour long game. Uh, that not I, the way you're playing it. Not the way. I, I, it took me two hours. It was a 30 minute walkthrough, which is a lot about the game. Uh, but the, the thing that I kind of, as I was playing it, it feels like a student game. Like mm. there's like, it needs to be set in this kind of a location. It needs to be about what it turns out to be is like, Spoil it, spoil it. It's, well, I mean, it's not even a spo It's very confusing because Is basically... It Chernobyl? It, well, it, gets big, it turns out that there was like a nuclear strike mm -hmm. on this place. I can tell you that. Yep. <laughs> I got an achievement because I pushed out a, a cabinet out of a window. Um, <laughs> with no button help, I just knocked into it. Yeah, uh, nice. But it's like a nuclear strike, but the kind of the game all ends up with talking about technology and stuff and literally makes you watch a student film. Like, that's <laughs> one of the moments in the game is like... Hey, what are you dancing look behind at you go. Yeah, yeah, fun. I was How excited you are by Nucleus. Let me, I, I don't know if the music, if you can hear the drums. It's just the track that they just use for it. I didn't have enough sound in the thing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so just thrashing around oh, yeah. wi wildly then, to very soft music. Yeah, and, then, <laughs> and just to give you all the way to the end of the game because you don't need to play it. It turns into a Kojima game, which is uh, quite startling. Oh. It just oh shit! It what just, the? F it's a Death Stranding. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, um, so then you walk through the wasteland of all the bodies who died. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Doesn't it make you think, Will? It, no. There you go. <laughs> so just don't play this game. Is my messaging. Thank you. What's it called again? Uh, in rays of the light. In rays of the light. Everything's a capital letter except for the R. Except for the R. <laughs> I just saw you lift up. By well, the I'm, back I'm of joining it. the bodies in the sky. You see. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a performance art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all righty. That's a good tip to avoid. How interesting. Mm -hmm. Never heard of this. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, good. Well, let's round it out with moi. Yep. Played Ori. Finished yep. Ori. Good man. Played a lot of Call of Duty. You can't finish that. Still playing Disco Elysium. 
I'll talk more about that when I've really. Wait, hit were the you playing Call of Duty Zombies? No, 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 no. New, uh, new multiplayer map came out. Because you said you would play with me. I w- still will. <laughs> it's a daytime version of Miami. It's fine. Um, but you want to talk about games with good names. Let Please. me tell you about Clap Hands Golf. Oh, my God. Uh, There's no D in that hand. I'm intrigued. By the way, I think it's hilarious <laughs> that there are five of us here and not one of us played Outriders. <laughs> Which I've is like what I've everyone is talking about right That's now. That's why we didn't no. play it. We're like, Steph got everything that we wanted to get out of that game. I uh, hear the powers are fun. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I just, I just, I hated that game so much. Tell us about game. Clap Hands, Nick. So I'm going to tell you, talk to you about Clap Hands Golf. Uh, the first thing I will say is I put in our Slack today that I was playing Clap Hands Golf. Uh, some of the responses I got from Peter was Clap Hands Golf. <laughs> he said Hans Booby. Booby. Uh, Pete said this better be some fucking German deli golf game. And then you said I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. So that's where we're at in terms of like which a is workplace. a phrase that people have said. <laughs> oh my god! But the reason that I played this is uh, this is actually from the developers. This is who made everybody's golf, golf or hot shots to golf, depending on where you are. Everybody's at. golf is great. So, so there are twelve. Look- they've made twelve of these for PlayStation over the last like two decades. Yeah. They made it for the PSP. They made it for the Vita. They made it for the PS4 and the I PS5. It. it was weird. And uh, this is the first time that they've made one that is not for a PlayStation uh, because this is on the iOS Apple Arcade, mm. which I totally forgot I had. But Apple Arcade had like a big update during the week where they dropped like 30 new games. Yeah, cool. Uh, there's one from like a Final Fantasy lineage and there's some cool stuff in there. Um, but I love golf games. Golf games are like weirdly one of my secret well not so secret but like sort of just like weird gaming fetishes where i just i love the i love the whole i just love golf i love you love holes i just love holes uh and (laughs) i love the hot shots games i actually think they're my favorite golf games the combination of like some of the little powers and abilities that you have as players the sort of like funness of it but at its core is actually a really fundamentally great golf game the reason I loved it on the PSP I'm and on the sorry Vita. Sorry for yeah. three par. Every day Nick strays further from God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I. Uh, that's so um, uh, the reason, and I loved these games on the Vita and the PSP, and I really liked it on the PS4. But I didn't play that much of it because it doesn't feel like one of those games that when you sit down in front of like a television for the night, it's like what you want to be doing for hours on end. It feels like something that you want to pick up it kills time it yeah cr- it's yeah, a time yeah, killer yeah. and now it's on the app store and so i picked it up uh it doesn't have any microtransaction time gated bullshit because it's in there sort of like apple arcade thing yep and it turns out the hand the touch controls for it are phenomenal yeah, so cool. it's actually like and really i think you'll really like this like it is hot shots golf everybody's golf but using like finger flicks and stuff that feel really, in fact, I would say it controls better than when you are using uh, the console joystick. with the buttons. Yeah, yeah right. um, d- definitely a joystick and also the t- sort of time button thing because you can drag it, you can get like the perfect amount of power and stuff. Mm. Um, anyway, like there's nothing here that you're not expecting. It's basically just a fun golf game. Mm. But the fact that it works really well on the phone was like, oh, this is exactly like this is me with the PSP version of this yeah, where I right. go, oh, I put like 60 hours into that over the course of a couple of years of just like picking it up every now and then. Yeah, nice. Right. So very exciting. It's Terrible very name. Clap hands. H-A-N-Z. Like why? That's why we were, yeah. Hard. Why? Um, I just quickly like I, I I hate this about myself, but I hate stylized golf games. I love them as oh, realistic as want, possible. You want to feel like you're at the country club with your folks. Totally. I want a sim that like yeah. He's got a membership. Why wouldn't you use it? Well, that's true. Um, so I don't <laughs> love the amount uh, you know me and UI and all this kind of stuff. But I'm interested to play <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, for like really that. Um, that one thing I would say is because it's mobile, is it has it got a good way to play score chasing against m- friends? Because that's a really that would be a cool thing about a mobile golf oh, game. Totally. That'd be like yeah. if I sat down and saw that you'd got this score on that course, I would play to try and. That's top a really that. that's a really good question, and I'm and I'm not like entirely sure. The way those sure. characters like <clears throat> speed walk and speed walk. Yeah, or do oh, that. I hate that. that. Oh, I hate that. Uh, uh, that would get you kicked out of the country club, Steph. I assume <laughs> I assume that it does <laughs> yeah. because it just feels like it, it like the socialness of it feels like it should be there. It being I don't entirely device. know, but I, I assume that it does. I, like I'm I'm the opposite to you. I don't like realistic golf games because I'm like. 
it's too boring. Like it's too like I mean, it, the only good thing about golf is going out into the world and playing golf because you're outside with some friends. And and so if I'm just looking at it on the screen, I'm like, this is the most fucking ugly, boring looking <laughs> game ever. But this is kind of like amusing. The uh, I did take a screenshot at the very beginning. There is a Star Wars text scroll at the top, <laughs> and uh, the first line of it is in the year twenty. 20- XX. <laughs> so they don't even commit to a time frame. In the year 20 XX. No, it's the year it's the year 20. Kiss kiss. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh golfers' minds were blown when mm. new rules were introduced. Never did anyone imagine rounds would be played as a team, one person per hole. Golf had become about assembling the best. <laughs> And the idea is that you have a team of golfers who each play one hole each. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you like golf games and you have Apple Arcade, check it out. Cool. Um, Go hands. And then the <laughs> other thing that I played, um, hands in. <laughs> which is new, which is on Game Pass, which dropped last week, is Narita Boy. Uh, that. I heard about this. So um, I was not interested in this game when I sort of heard about it and the um, po- sort of, I guess, poster or like... Uh, what do we call it? Like cover art? I guess cover art is what we say sure. when it's on a digital store. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Didn't grab me at all, but I'd heard people talk about the art style. Uh, so I went, okay, I'll check it out. It's a phenomenal looking game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, cool. it it has this sort of like, it's, I guess it's pixel art, um, but it, it has... It has fluidity and movement to it that is like it has tons yeah, of bespoke animations right. within that. Oh, so it's amazing. not something that you necessarily see all the time when you like think of these kinds of games. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are tons. Like I love the moments where. Um, uh, so uh, sorry, going back. It's a platformer. Um, you. I lo- that the clapping is the thing that I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Every time it it, it needs to uh, open a terminal or address motherboard, it does this like. Pray and clap thing that's just <laughs> fucking awesome. He goes, golf, golf, <laughs> uh, everybody, golf. Um, but uh, you, you're basically Take going sword. through a computer, yeah. and you, like motherboard is a character. You're going after like anyway. It front loads a ton of story in the first ten minutes, and it is like all techno babble story. And there's like a charm to it, but at the same time, I'm like. It's just shut up like sh- stop <laughs> yeah, right. you've, you've thrown so many pronouns at me and so many like like uh, capital letter words where I'm just like oh it feels like destiny lore or something sure. yeah but um, when you get into the actual game it is not that fun um, I've heard- <laughs> yeah, it yeah. just doesn't play particularly well the jump is really floaty you can't control midair the fighting is like pretty basic the gameplay like I found myself just jumping off ledges all the time because you just miss there is something like fundamentally to me wrong about the jump it just doesn't feel right Right. it just feels (laughs) like you never know where you're going to land and the same with the combat it's kind of like button mashy there's some cool ideas to it but it's like you have these cool abilities where you've got like the sword swipe thing but then if you pull the right trigger uh, the sword turns into like a shotgun and you do a blast but if you hold the right trigger like the Narita Boy TV style head turns into this huge 4-3 sort of television that opens up and like shoots out a laser beam it shoots Zack Snyder out at you it does (laughs) and it feels and again it's that thing of like all this sort of animation is exactly what you think of when you think of like a modern pixel art game and then it suddenly has this fluidity to it Mm -hmm. that constantly catches you by surprise Gus I think that you it's definitely worth you checking out just from like an art perspective of going this is doing something very cool and as and I played I played about two hours or something of it oh, yeah. and it goes to some other really cool locales that all feel super hyper stylized and stuff so I'm definitely not here for the gameplay and the story is a bit weird but I I am just like it is so, so nice to look at. I've heard some yeah. similar people talking about it. Sorry, people saying similar things about it, which is that, yeah, they're just so blown away by the art style and the aesthetic of it. But, yeah, unfortunately, the performance of it is something you have to push through to enjoy that look, um, which, and again, it- is something that I, yeah, I would be willing to do to... Yeah, for something that has such a, a style like this. Yeah, and I mean, any time that Nick finds a story weird, you know it's fucked. <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> uh, going on? It, fe- it, it, I believe that the um the team is actually pretty small, and it really feels like there was like they went, we have art, 
and we just need to like the way <laughs> yeah, the on. way that this art is best shown is in a video game. Yeah. So we need to just build a video game around this art as opposed to we need to build art for a video game. But yeah. um, those Oddworld, de- Oddworld developers, they got no excuse. They got no excuse. <laughs> um, <laughs> crappy platform. So I recommend people just like download this and play like an hour. It's just on Game to, Pass. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. cool. So, Check it out. And, and again, like this is a recurring thing, but it's like a perfect Game Pass game. Yeah. It is it is like the medium. It's this thing of like, this. this is just the thing that you kill a couple of hours with in between the really big titles, this justified my Game Pass for the month. I, Outriders wasn't going to, so like, <laughs> yeah. this was that thing where I'm like, oh yeah, this was worth ten bucks for yeah. however long. It's good for a little yeah. dabble. Yeah, and, dabble. and it re- and it really does look lovely, and it's got great sound effects. It's just like that whole theme and feeling package is rock solid, and um, yeah, great. yeah, so just a just a cool thing, and it's a shame that it doesn't play better. Because if this played like Ori or something, mm. this would just be up yeah. there in terms of like, yeah. oh, this is so. And what I love. I can imagine it has steep comp- competition. You've got games like, um, uh, what was that Samurai one from earlier this uh, last year that was done in a pixel style as well? Uh, Katana Zero. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah, ones that have The like, Messenger. The and Messenger, that they have yeah, incredibly yeah. strong uh, styles about them. And then, yeah, they have, uh, they're built around a gameplay uh, mechanic that feels super retro. Super I mean, it's like cool. Hollow Knight as well, where it, and it has this, and it has a bit of that sort of like backtracking and going through memories and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Unfortunately, so. yeah, these art styles aren't enough to hang the game on entirely if there's not that game there as well. And those other ones, like even Hotline Miami and stuff, it's like that art style is crazy. Like Hyper Light Drifter. Like, yeah, those yeah, games feel like wonderful. So it's unfortunate that it doesn't have that, but yeah, still looks stunning at the same time. It looks cool. Like the animation is really cool. <laughs> yeah. That run is something else. It's so good. And 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 the moments, and it, and it is, I think it's like a testament to the fact that there are lots of times where just something, like a really bespoke moment happens and something happens to your character or the environment and that like that is what is getting me through this where I'm like delighted to see how it moves and yeah. and I and I don't think that about many video games I don't think I generally don't stick with video games just because of how they look like I get very bored with something like that where, but this really is you're right Hollow Knight had that too when a character would do a little animation that was like hand drawn you're like yeah. wow yeah. that is beautiful you can tell you can tell you can see where the effort went into and uh, yeah it's it's, nice. uh, it, it's just a pretty gorgeous looking thing so speaking of gorgeous little things hi it's me uh, that is all the game <laughs> we've been playing tons of them well done everybody yes uh let's jump to a break was he giving us a positive thumbs up looks that way is it a thumbs down now oh. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Cut away. Go to a oh, we gotta look at him Where's it sending us? It seems to want us to go this way. What's down here? What's this way? That feels like it's moving with some gusto. Is someone there? No No one's there. No one's there. You know, I forgot until... Right now, the Jimmy. Yes, I yeah. was about to say. You know when I forgot until we walked into that dark room that there's a crazy man hunting us. <sighs> oh fuck!
welcome back and a massive thank you there to It's Jep and uh, Siemens Deaf Mints uh, for sending in words from their sponsors. And also you saw a commercial there for another playback for At Dead of Night. An ultimate? The second last, yep, yeah. an ultimate. Second That's last. what the second last means. Uh, that, was, that scare was the biggest scare <laughs> in the game. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. That was, was the one where we were like... It's been a while since. Ah! <laughs> yeah. 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 Which you need when a game is drawing itself out longer and longer. You guys were knackered in, like, you'd been in here recording and I was working, and then suddenly, ah! And it's yeah. like the energy would rise again for another 10, 15 minutes. It's great. It's such a shame we killed that segment. <laughs> um, uh, but what we haven't killed is your thirst. For merch. Thirsty <laughs> merch. That's what we should call That's this what segment. we should call this segment uh, is thirsty uh, merch. Yeah, oh, right. Quick, Write that no, down. Write it. that down. Right. Pen. No, I, I mean it. Get a pen. Get a pen. <laughs> Get it. And you're, Pete, you're going to cut to him in 10 seconds to make sure that he wrote. I'm, already, uh, I'm on it. I want every letter to be a capital except for the R in merch. <laughs> <laughs> We should do that. We could get on. Um, what's his name? That he was in our studios. The Thirsty Merc. Thirsty That's his Merc. name. His name is not Thirsty Merc. It is Mr. Is it Merc. Merc? <laughs> oh God! Can't, it's, I can't it's see written it. Down. But I'm sure it's I'm there. Sure it's there. Somewhere. We believe. Yeah. You. Play. Zoom and enhance someone. We believe. You. Zoom and enhance can be. A, that's a word from our sponsor. Uh, Play terrible PS5 remake. Yeah. <laughs> you cross that one off. Uh, it is time for thirsty merch. Yes, it's a segment where Ray Thistlethwaite. Ray Thistlethwaite. Yeah, that's his name. Wow. Thistlethwaite. Yeah, I'd go with thirsty merch as well. Wow. <laughs> he was a lovely bloke. Um, very smart, philosophical guy. This is a segment where we don't talk about uh, Australian rock stars. We talk about the merch that we're putting out there, and we've done a little update to the Redbubble store. Um, which you can see here. Basically, the game club that you guys would have seen recently that we launched had a new snazzy logo. So, Will, if you can click on the um, the game club catalog of stuff that we now have, we've got it uh, appropriately attached to a couple of bits of stationery. There's a hardcover notebook and a spiral notebook for keeping all your notes How while nice. you play the game. <laughs> Very nice. nice. So you Very can play cool. your game use. and you write down your notes, you write down your thoughts. So when we do our big episode uh, at the end of the month about that game, you can go over your notes, you can cross-reference them. Cross I'm, reference them. I'm getting one of those. It's very. I yeah, really want cool. one. Like it The looks, second I did this, I was like, classy. this looks like it should sit on a notebook. So uh, it's a bit confusing, but if you do go to the Redbubble store, which you're seeing the web website down there and you click on the Game Club logo, if you scroll down, you'll see uh, like available on other products. Uh, and if you click on that, you'll see that we've now got it on some classy premium t-shirts because it looked like a nice badge. So it sits a bit awkwardly on the female scoop neck one, uh, but you can only set it to one position for all three shirts. On so the left breast. On the left <laughs> breast. Uh, but I think that's uh, the like that's a unisex t-shirt. Um, so it sits really nice on that. I'm going to get that t-shirt myself. I'm a big fan. Oh, look at that bat. I never saw the toe. There you go. I That's was like, fucking hot. It just yeah, looks, looks like sick. it should sit on a tote as well. So you can get it on a tote. It also, it's nice because it's Game Club. It feels like a membership to something. Mm. Awesome well, Stephanie, it's wonderful you bring that up because if you're a member of something, then you want to wear you want to wear that with pride. And you can now with a Game Club back pocket pin. Uh, <laughs> so it just looks badge worthy as well. So slap that one on a badge as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can get the uh, back pocket Game Club merch as well and rep a bit of that. I know we're going to because it just it turned into a nice logo overnight. So, um, Hopefully the show is good. Yeah, that too. Otherwise yeah. you've got a bunch of that. suck if you bought merch for something that at the end of the month you're like, wow, that was, this is a really pe bad piece of content that they put out. <laughs> so yeah, we're really digging ourselves uh, in deep before we've even made the content. But it was a nice logo, so we slapped on some merch uh, for you guys. Uh, and then that was everything I think the Game Club one went on. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we thought we should also make something a bit more fun um, that I've been meaning to do for a while. So Did you I make this for me? I made this for Nick because he wears some pretty outlandish looking footwear and I thought, what better way to celebrate them with some pocket socks? Yeah. Uh, these are custom pockety sockities. Uh, and as you'll see, they've got a uh, the regular pockety print, a uh, nice little bit of the usual colour up the top as well. And on each toe, uh, even though this one. Sockities, says Avexia. This, <laughs> one of the pictures, the name to Sockities. One of the pictures in the um, Red Bubble previews is wrong. I think it was the one you just had uh, that shows the same two hosts on both feet. But mm. that's not how uh, the design sits. No, it's, it's showing you lady leg and man leg. Oh, it is. Oh, my God. I just noticed. 
<laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> Why are legs different? That's Why does it matter? It's the same sock, right? Yeah. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe women are like, I don't want to see what that sock looks like on a big man foot. With hair poking through the little yeah. holes in the sock. Also, she's cool. standing like she's wearing invisible heels. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> Will, we know what's coming out of the top of Pockety next week. Um, but if we scroll down, I think there's another picture of them. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, even below that one, I think, Will, actually, is them on some feet. Uh, and on the toes of each sock are uh, each of us. Um, so there's, I think, Steph and I are on one and Pete and Nick are on the other. And on nice. the underside of each sock, uh, hiding in the shadows, is a little Will pressing all the buttons under your heels. Oh, I see uh, So he's tucked away under there oh, as well. Oh, that's cheeky. So there's a cheeky that's little cheeky. wheel in there as well. So there's some pockety socks on the Redbubble store that um, I, I've gotten the itch again to design some more custom merch. So uh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Is he okay with this? So, so I'm looking at that and I see Will move over to his camera and he's doing a little wave and stuff but you didn't see him no. so you never cut to it and so Will's just kind of like holding this incredibly awkward position where his feet are still on his chair on the other yeah. computer and then he just like looks over at me and I clock him and I'm just like did you wait not that? gonna happen and he's like yeah <laughs> uh, those are great I'm gonna wear the shit out of those of course you are yeah, because BMAC great. I don't want to walk all over Will I'm not Nick <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it's because he's here. He's he's the one doing all the work uh, on the bottom of your feet. So. Uh, those are great socks. Those are so, that is so exciting. I'm keen to do some more uh, custom items as well. Uh, I'm going to try and make a few key big items before packs. You because, know what I want. Uh, you want a hoodie? A duffel bag? A hat. You're Leggings. kidding. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> what do you want? Really? Uh, You've hats. forgotten what I want? Baseball cap. Hats. Baseball cap. Baseball cap. But sure. I mean, I'll take all of that. I want you shitting yourself. Ah. Uh, uh, yes, he does. I genuinely forget. God yeah, yeah. damn it. He wants me. I mean, maybe there's a pockety shitting itself as me. Like. No. no. It's you, your face. You had. Why is this so difficult? All right. All right. You made the perfect face. It could have been a t-shirt already. <laughs> it's the fucking best thing you've ever done. You've already made a couple the of chat all of said it. no at once. <laughs> Everyone on chat. I but, want it. Yeah, flood the chat with the emotion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe That's yeah. what I want. I just want that on a t-shirt, a little stylized. Just right, a st pog. <laughs> stylized vintage shitting. Poo of game. Us. Poo of game. Poo, Poo of game. game. Poo of game. Uh, okay, good. So, excellent work on the new merch. Thank of you. course, the Red Bubble Stories aren't the only place you can get merch you can join up to our patreon we have not done a patreon plug properly in a while uh head to patreon.com forward slash back pocket or back pocket gg and you can get what happened there's a no, poll for poo of game instant oh, good. Poll. Yeah, instant, yeah. Instant good. Poll. good it's it, look that whole emote and world need a makeover in the last couple of weeks so poo of game feels perfect uh head to patreon.com forward slash back pocket become a member of our community that is how we fund uh, so much of this program that you know and love you will not get poo of game without something like the Patreon. Uh, and, of course, there is a ton of tiers accessible for all uh, price ranges that you want to get involved. The show is always going to be free, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you want to throw a couple of bucks our way at any tier, it is much appreciated. The uh, Patreon, the, sorry, the Discord is free for everyone to access, but if you want to unlock the whole thing, it's the uh, Tier 2 and above. Tier 3 is probably the most popular tier that gives you some behind-the-scenes access to things like the post show. But then there is also the uh, Wear Back Baby tier, which is you get a piece of Back Pocket exclusive merch that is not sold anywhere else every three months. The first of that shipped out. I've been getting notification after notification <laughs> from Patreon telling me the T-shirts are beaming their way across the world to the homes of people who uh, subscribe to that tier. So if you want to be one of those people, head to patreon.com forward slash back pocket and consider throwing a few bones our way so we can get ourselves a Gus shitting himself t-shirt. That is what we need. We just need the financial, the financial safety that he can spend half a day working on that. Exactly. I'll wear it. 
Uh, we should also mention in the Discord, you get access to those other channels, uh, like Nick mentioned, but there will be a Game Club one in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, if for people who are wondering how they can get involved with the Game Club, um, there will be a locked uh, Discord channel for those tiers uh, that you can join the conversation. You can all have your opinions in there, and then we will source all the information from said channel uh, for your opinions about the show at the end of the month as well. So that is a good reason to get on the Discord as well. And Nacrotex in the chat says, don't forget to set your shirt size in Patreon like I did. So now, Cortex, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to send us a picture of you in that shirt because it's either going to be really big or really small. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lend you my ring fit adventure or just eat more. Or the M&Ms know. that we've got here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, let's move on with the show because it's time for the next segment and that segment is Very Good Gameplay brought to you by Avexia. 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 Someone who... I'm fairly certain has not forgotten, forgotten to uh, set their t-shirt size. Vexia, you've got a t-shirt coming your way because you uh, subscribe at the very top tier where you own a segment. And the segment of Vexia that you own today is a very special, very good gameplay. Because even though we played a ton of games this week and none of us played Outriders, the game that everybody else is talking about and going, hey, it's really good, surprisingly, or no, it's still terrible. We are playing something very special. Stephanie Ben Dixon. Well, no. no I'm not the not game. Playing We're not playing also, there's no. nothing wrong with the Vexia anymore. Will, you're I've run out of a Vexia yeah, words. I've just decided to like talk yeah. about them in a friendly no, way. Good. Sometimes you just have to let go of the bit and move on. Yeah, the bit yep. it, the yep. bit's run its course. It can evolve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is gonna be really fun. Before I start, can I just say um, uh, the people who are gonna be uh, if there's anyone in the server right now, can you just go to the main house uh, and make sure you have your map thing turned on <laughs> How so that Peter can find his way to you? In which game? Liz Dahlia should be there, I think. Um, so that because he's just spawned into the world and doesn't know where he is. So um, if you just stay there, you will be the beacon that will uh, guide him. Okay, so we've been playing about Valheim uh, on our own sort of separate servers and stuff like that. And we thought it'd be a great idea to set up a pocket, back pocket server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gat set up the server for us. Thank you, Gat. A long way away. Lord of everything who creates wonderful things for us so that we can have fun and uh, chop down trees. Right. Pray forget. Pray forget. Um, I'm turning into Barger. And so <laughs> I jumped into this world with a few different people and um, a f like a few different pocketeers. And we were kind of thinking like, what should we make in the world? We started building like a big hole. You know, we started gathering resources. Everyone was pretty experienced with the game by this point. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, what, what do we want the back pocket server to be? And at one point I was like, what if we built like a really fun maze that people can like, when they come into the server, um, they can like, you know, try the maze and that will be like a fun like <laughs> thing for people to try when they're kind of spawning in because we wanted it to be a place even though you can only have 10 people in the server at one time yep. you can have as many people coming through that server mm -hmm. so um people can totally try this maze when they want to uh if they want to later on in the week um then um we started thinking what it would be really fun if we made the maze like kind of like a test of of metal where you, <laughs> um, where not only do you have to try and get through the end, you have to survive all of these like really fun and um, terrifying deaths. Mm -hmm. So it became, uh, it very quickly <laughs> became fun uh, deaths. <laughs> a, a um, very masochistic death maze. Oh God. And we started coming up with all of these really um, complex ideas of how to kill people. So uh, it, within the maze, there are not only like, you know, traps and, you know, things that will kill you. There are portals. If you've not played Valheim, you can create portals that can connect to another portal anywhere on the yep. map. This is literally the first time I've seen Valheim played other than, like, a trailer. Yeah, yeah right. right. Okay, cool. Um, so... <laughs> that a dick? <laughs> there are some portals that will, um, in within the maze, that will take you to other parts of the map where um, you may either just die... <laughs> oh, God. ...or you may have to continue through a section of the maze that takes place externally from the original maze right. before go returning through another portal. So it's not all built around one thing. It's like you've made these sort yes. of lab oh, sorry, these like challenges in and around that are connected to each other. Yeah, there is like a central maze and then there's like portions of it that take place outside of the thing. Got it. We decided that the, the way to make the maze um, really challenging is to just make it as confusing as possible. To find, it <laughs> seems like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reese will guide you. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, Reese came up with the idea to use um, cloth banners as a way to kind of box off every um, portion of the maze. Is this, is this it? This is it? Um, Part of it? Uh, no, no, this, this like is our main ha like our, our hub town. This is where you live? This is where we live, yeah. Wow. So I'm going to read out a list of names of people that have um, 
contributed to this because it's actually like an amazing feat. And this was kind of the vision for the back pocket server was to have everyone just come in there and like and add stuff to it. Yep. Where and you live? Yes. This is like, so we, this is where we started just building like the house. Um, so uh, the main house was m largely the work of Banana Corn, um, Liz Dahlia and Funky Fee. Um, who All just, Viking names. Yes. Who create <laughs> incredible um, Hol location. Sorry, not to cut you off. Holy shit, these are the portals? Uh, yes. So you have to go, you got to check out the main house first because it's amazing. It's just like the most advanced storage system ev ever. This is where you live? This is where we live. Wait, uh, is all of this built? By hand. Like stairs? Yes. What? All of it. Look at the central. Is this Liz Dahlia's uh, like insane storage system? This is not even like a, a 20th of the storage what system. What's going on? It's like she she invented like wow. her own like Dewey Decimal system to oh like. My God. So you go into these kind of library corridors of storage that yep. she made. This is oh. where you live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Uh, and the large sort of largely the architecture was banana corn. Banana corn is an incredible builder. Built this twisty thing around the fire so and all that cool. kind of stuff. That's really insane. incredible. Um, so, this is so uh, sick. <laughs> but this isn't even the half of it. Like if you go through another portal, there is this incredible incredible like effectively Rivendell that was built by Meany and Zorb and they created this incredible like city in the trees that has like beautiful kind of hobbit style taverns with drinks and meads and all beautiful like tr connected treetop things it's so good we haven't even got to the maze yet but we can go there now um so and i'm sitting here playing clap hands <laughs> golf <laughs> you don't need to worry about beds yet peter you, you don't want to um go to this we'll talk, bed. Uh, okay, okay, cool. also like talk so, Pete through where he needs yeah, to go okay so if you head back out uh the front door that you came in yep to the portal area to the portal area yep um, head through that gate and then immediately turn to your right. What the f Th That portal right there. That, that's the start? Yes, that's, that's the one you want to go through. It's got the, like, um, deer boss above it. <clears throat> okay. This is very cool. It's, it's like, uh, this, this is, is a just a small part of what's, of what's in the maze as well. Are we go uh, of what's in the world sound out of well. it, Pete? Sorry? There's sound coming through for people plot watching. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and just just so I, I'm clear, um, and I'm sure. Can you can you please just go up to no? that sign there and, and just focus in on it? Just zoom in on it, Peter. Everyone knows about. Ah, oh, sure. Everyone knows about Valheim, but like the roof and stuff. Mm -hmm. Are you laying individual planks or are you like uh, building? There's like square roof pieces. Okay, yeah. And then there are like uh, peaked roof what? pieces yep. as well. Um, but everything needs to be oh, built yeah, so in done. accordance with like physics. So you yeah. can't yeah. just build right, okay. floating stuff. Like every everything needs to be supported by beams and stuff and it'll collapse if you don't. This is wild. Um, you know, build with so, proper building structure. Yeah, so I think what Nick's asking as well is like there are ways also to the, build. Also the rain will also deteriorate anything that doesn't have a Amazing. roof on it. Yeah, wow. Like, yeah, you can do tiled sections, but you can Wait. also do individual planks to, like, make this, those this structures, like the twisty fire thing. Yeah. Can you read oh, that sign? Oh, Nick's going to fucking come when he sees <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So if you, oh, can, it's true. if you go up the stairs to your right... This is your house? <laughs> no, this is where people can attempt the maze. And this is good for people to know if they want to come and attempt the maze. Um, the first thing you'll need to do is go to this area. Here are all the beds. You can claim one of these beds so that when you die, and you respawn. will die many times, you'll respawn back here. Clever. And there is chests up there for you to dump all your gear into because you don't want to have anything on you or with you Thought it all through. that you're not afraid to... Is there a move all? No. I don't think so. Just uh, I'll keep talking um, while you do all that. You'll need to use multiple chests probably. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that when you, you don't lose anything because you'll go through the maids and you will die and you won't be able to retrieve your body in many of the places that you will die. So um, you need to be, it needs to just be a nude run. You can have some food on you um, and we've got food that we can supply you as well. Who are you? <laughs> I love the idea of she's running the tour. Welcome to the death mate. Totally. Put all your clothes in this chest. <laughs> we have food we will supply. <laughs> yeah, we do. Have the, the, we have food that we could supply to you was the line that was like. That was an optional extra on the form. You didn't fill that out, but that's fine. We can <laughs> <laughs> Are we playing a video game right now? Is this David Finch's The Game? This is like a fun experiment of death. Um, so <laughs> we just got so into like the mechanics of the maze, yeah. like how we could like make this experience like equal parts fun and traumatic for people. Yeah, <laughs> um, and there was so much like play testing that went into it and like fun and a lot of like discussions and some arguments around how things should go and where things should run. But it was, I would say I would be, I'm the like executive producer of the maze. Mm -hmm. I would say Liz Dahlia is definitely the project manager. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, and then we had a whole bunch of really talented engineers who were kind of constructing everything. We were hearing clicking then, Pete, so I think we're all good. 
And now I'm hearing the crackling. Oh, the crackling of, of the fire. Yep. Um, I can't wait to so hear the screaming. The, in the, the death bar. maze. Um, I need to. T- I need to tell you is uh, the work of Reese Wild, Liz Dahlia, Jerish, Zedark, Banana Corn, Funky Fee, and Doctor Jerkberg. Um, all contributed to this maze in a really massive way. Excellent. There were lots of people who were also just involved in just collecting resources that we could build. <clears throat> all right. Um, all the signs, man. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, the signs, the signs all the way through the maze. Go Pete, like go. little jokes and funny little um, ba- like stuff. So this is um, this is a way to teach you a mechanic that you will have to use inside the maze. So if you don't know how to use portals, you need to set the tag for the portal, Peter, to sixty nine. <laughs> okay. And that's activated the portal, so now you can go through. Um, and that's just because the be- way that the portals work in the game is that you name a gate and then you build a sister gate with the exact same name and that creates the tether right. between That's right, yeah. So once you know how to do that, there'll be a point where you'll have to solve a riddle and the answer to that riddle will either... Te- like I need if to... If you get the answer wrong, it'll take you in. to certain death. Yeah, right. If you get the answer right, it'll it'll let you through. How interesting. Yeah. And I saw the cloth banners you just saw. These are the ones that basically... You, can, so you can't see you what you're You can't see through. through them. But, Loki's um, Funhouse. It makes it really... Um, confusing uh but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. something is the something of the something that's right okay. yeah um so everything every kind of square is kind of um blocked off by these banners and it becomes oh really God. disorientating oh it really God. is like a house of mirrors and um yeah is that, that a, is that a trap does that floor no, they're, fall all bear, they're all bear rugs <laughs> yeah come on pete something on the side you remind me of the babe what babe <laughs> the babe with the power that's a labyrinth reference i get it no <clears throat> way Okay. I think I think David Bowie is referencing something there, because you remind me of the man. Okay. Hey, Ooh, there's a portal. Okay, so the portals can either take you somewhere good. Sometimes they'll take you further through the maze. Here we go. Um, sometimes they'll take you to a bad place. Let's find out. So let's find out where this one's going to take you. The bad place. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is taking whoa, you back. Oh, oh my god! Oh, god. Look how many times I died in there. Oh fuck! <laughs> so, Emo <laughs> chat, no! <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> that was a slide Emo to a drop. Chad. We dug a big hole. <laughs> Reese did this one actually. Dug a big hole and like kited a troll into it. Oh my god! <laughs> you need to feed Good the effort. troll to keep it alive. You just did. No, we just no, did. He's, well, yes, he's fed on the on many of our bodies. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, were we keeping tabs on like where we were going then? That's the real worry. <laughs> Jerish in the chat just screamed, it works! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So that's one, uh, that's one portal thing. Okay. You All right. Go through. Pete, just wing it, I reckon. I'd like go the opposite way. He doesn't remember where he went. Well, I went this yeah, way. No, it went that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight ahead, straight ahead. <laughs> yeah, just charge straight ahead. I don't think there's anything that'll kill you in here. What does that sign say? say? Straight to the castle. Oh, yeah, that's another lap. Oh, that's another. No! <laughs> so that's a spike trap. So I'd like to take back what I said before, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so what we what we discovered is that you can dig a hole and you can actually lay um, a be- the, the, deer, the deer skins over it. Yeah. And it looks like floor, but um, you just fall straight through it. So how many Hilarious de- troll. How many deer do you have to kill to get, like, is it... One deer per skin? Uh, depends. There's like there's like two pointer deers, and they give you like four skins. Okay, good because I was just like, <laughs> uh, because I was just kind of thinking like, if that's if you're killing one deer per of those, it's like, well, we need twenty more for a room. No, but, but that's and the this jo- is just a gag room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the joy of the back pocket server, though. Like that, we had so many people that were just contributing to resource gathering, so that people could like forge ahead with the building. Right. right. Liz Dahlia did right, so much. I just want to make sure the deer skin because there's work. clues, right? Straight to the castle. Yeah. Is Bad. Yeah, that that's crap. So straight through there. there. Yep. Yeah. Now we're getting it. Yeah. Wrong way. The Wrong way is the right way. Me. That's actually a real. I yeah. think we it, went. Would this it. be back to the? Good job. No, this is this so is all new. Mind you, the babe. That, no, that was good job. Keep going. This is all new. This is yeah, all new. Okay. This is another portal. Well, this is good. Good this portal. Good. Or bad portal. I feel good about this portal. I feel like so wrong. I want to get to wrong way. If I if this is bad. Are there checkpoints with other beds? Just I was about to say. If he gets it wrong. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel good. Oh, uh, burial chambers. This is basically like there's dungeons in the game that have like um. Well, there's a lot of dead people in here, <laughs> yeah, but he's still have, alive. Like, this is okay. Skellies and stuff in them. Right. Is this part? Of, is it, it? Was this the right way? Can we get out? Uh, no. <laughs> it, this I, I need to find someone to kill me, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You forgot to put the skeletons in the death maze at the bottom. I think should, someone's killed them. You're you uh, you being poisoned? No. No, he's running oh, okay. out of stamina there. Um, this is so interesting that like you guys have created. 
not just a game, but like something so in depth around what it's <laughs> like. Have you been completing um, I guess, the quests and stuff? Uh, I think we in our other servers we were all kind of doing that stuff. I haven't finished like oh, all no. the bosses and stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, in uh, can you kill yourself? Oh, maybe not. Maybe all the skeletons. Do Reese is more. going. Where are my skeletons? <laughs> <laughs> where are my skeletons? <laughs> I can't even Draugr and stuff. Like, there's no one. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. oh no. Can you just load a save? I think if I log out, I log back into the same point as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone come and kill Pete. Oh, Reese is gonna get in there. Oh god. Fight <laughs> <Reese. laughs> to the death. <clears throat> I yeah, like that me, uh, they're bludgeoning you out of frustration that his maze doesn't work. Like, this <laughs> should have worked. Well, I think you weren't supposed to die like this. <laughs> you would have to enable PvP, I think, if Reese is going to kill you. How do you do that again? I think it's in, um, maybe in... Oh, the... was there someone there? No, there are uh, oh, the statues. Those corpses. Are I think those are, the, um, those are the tombstones of previous deaths. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh. Hey! This is a lovely room of death. Um... There you go. Well done, Pete. That's all Great. part of the that part of the challenge is try and find a way to get out. How will Reese get out? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, but yeah. So what you're saying? There is still the whole game there that you guys or that you're playing another. Yeah, we pieces. killed the last boss. We killed was the um, was the swamp boss. So each of the kind of biomes has its own boss um, to kill, and um, uh. The um, and yeah, we've we've killed the third one of I think five or six there are maybe. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, once well, I'll probably go back to uh, uh, my other server and sort of continue with that with my uh, with my other friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Reese. Yeah, yeah. And remind me, is this server that you guys have like there aren't any of the bosses like it's a create it's a it's a sandbox. No, they're server. all they're all there as well. Oh, they are. So, okay. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that. But like this is just like you can just Jesus feet. So there are still enemies and stuff. I went that way. It's just so that we're protected way. by a wall of stone. Very good. Uh, yes, these are all, this feels right. These are all Pockety cave, was here. Pockety was here. Um, these are all cave mushrooms that are. Big dick of... energy detected. <laughs> death, oh, death, no. death, death, death. God. Sorry, I thought you were facing. Right, oh, death. no. <laughs> oh, God. There's like four death rooms. <laughs> well, did we note which one we fell in? Yeah, I went in the right one. The wrong one. The right one? The. Oh, was it the middle one? No, that was right. That was right. I was spinning around a bit. I've got pretty good orientation. I, I feel like I can get back. Yeah, here. I do not have good orientation. I, I got so lost when I was just trying to test this today to find my to make sure that I knew how to get through it. I fell in like six different spike traps. Are we also like <laughs> I imagine at challenge number one kind of thing? Like this feels pretty epic, considering how many portals there were around. Or is that not there? Are they're to the different part? parts of the map. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, right. we went yeah. into the maze can, there's portal. There's portals that can take you to different parts of the map, and there's like a further bit of like you. you that doesn't necessarily mean you die. Oh, okay, like there's right. parts of the maze that you can th that exist externally that you can get through, and then um, we'll keep bring forgetting where that is. Yeah, That's cool. that. I always double check that. That's so, you're, you're so good with maze orientation. This is so. Amazing. I instantly forget. Apply this to a life skill, and then you need to get pockety was here and big dick energy. Yeah, yeah, and then it's. This is the And death. you went right? Death, death, death. I went right. Straight ahead then. Straight ahead. <laughs> Good. Okay. I was going to say left. So now we I mean, know it's not. They might all be left and we're in the wrong spot. I mean, sorry, it's they might all be deaf and we're in the wrong spot. I, I mean, by the logic of a Dinotopia novel I read when I was seven, <laughs> left is right and right is wrong. <laughs> Dinotopia. Mm. It was a book series where they were written dinosaurs. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah like great. beautiful. I really thought you would have read that. Beautiful illustrated yeah, books. There you yeah. go. It was in one chapter and every time I get to a left and a right. Uh, Peter, left is yes. right, right if is you, wrong. If you just go through, don't go through there. Oh. Um, if you just go go back to the bread, the, yeah. If you just jump through there. Oh my God! He's breaking the maze. Some, left, 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 left. There's some stairs there that just circumvent the portal things so, because you know that mechanic now. You don't. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, cool, cool, right. Cool, okay. Cool, yeah. Still cool, in the maze of death. Yeah. 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 Um, we don't know for certain that this is not going to be death. Give it a shot. There's only one way to find out. Oh my God! He's speed running a maze. It's nauseating. Uh, and then he always gets uh, the bit goes. No, there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. This would have. This is a engineering feat. Yeah, it was just like, you know when you put so many different heads to, Yay! to, to build something? Turn back. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> oh, God. It's a troll. What's that one And saying? then it you becomes can make this it probably. wonderful probably. melting pot of crazy ideas. Uh, <laughs> no, no, oh, my God. Okay. No! <laughs> you pricks. Ca camera fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> death, death awaits. Death. I went right. Right. Did anyone take Maybe Scotty can help? Exit this way. <gasps> oh, it's gonna oh, kill me. It's definitely gonna kill me. It's gonna kill me. There is a portal that takes you literally like right to the end. Oh, is it right. this one? Who knows? 
You are freezing. Okay, so quickly, oh, is... quickly, Peter, quickly. Oh, now. Because you're freezing. Quickly. Yep. Uh, jump. <laughs> what oh happened? So that's a section God. that you're meant to be in. Oh, there were spike traps over there as well. Was he supposed to be there? <laughs> yeah. This is so the that's next... the next I'm, phase. I'm actually... got... am, am I like halfway through? Uh, I would say you're like a third of the way. Okay. <laughs> but um, that's the right way. But you just need to speed run through that because you're freezing at the same time because you're nude. Because yes. you didn't take any clothes, Peter. Well, Can I take my clothes? The tour guide said, please leave. Oh, wait, but he's still freezing. Oh, oh that's, no. that just happens to be because there is a, um, a world event happening right now <laughs> <laughs> where, like, the dragons infiltrate. But it should be fine because you're inside. So is there a top-down view of, like, when you're building? Uh, can anyone? Or, no. You like, can zoom out pretty far. But I, I'm just saying, like in this kind of, with this kind of building where you are building a maze, mm. this is incredibly difficult if you're building from an over-the-shoulder totally. perspective, I as opposed to like Minecraft. You can zip yeah. out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, you stuff. can't really do that. What, Amazing. We um. Gonna wait till my stamina But you can kind of go up on a hill and look down on it. Yeah. Right. Still, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a big. Big, uh, we went to yeah. a, um, I just found a maze from a maze generator and then um, everyone kind of built it from that and then made modifications to it to account for the large amounts of... Were there trolls in the generated one? Go, Pete, go. There were no trolls in the maze generator. All right. Watch out for the... Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, nice, oh, nice, God. nice, Very nice. Good. Get your chilly willy out Was of that there. place always going to be freezing? Yes. Or is it just because the world... We built it in the snow. <laughs> okay, good, 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 yeah. good. So it's a portal to... Oh, so this is in a completely different area of the map. That's just right. Portal it just very transported clever, very clever, you to very like clever. a separate chunk of maze that takes place on a snowy mountain. Very nice. And then, oh. and then at the end you portaled back. Oh, God, I hate you. I'm, oh, I thought I, was, I thought I was cheating. You were <laughs> cheating and he still... That happened. I love it. Um, <laughs> I died. <laughs> that is so good. There's so many spike traps in there. <laughs> I love that, as you were saying before, you're like, oh, this is because there's a world event going on. Because meanwhile, while like, the server's like, we're being invaded by dragon, and Peter's naked running around going, uh, left, right, hang on, I'm in a maze. Like, <laughs> yeah. Actually, the maze the maze will keep you safe from the world event because it's a big stone. Bit safe. Fortress. <laughs> um, so you're in not the same protected way that, from the elements. In the same way that Jigsaw was keeping all those people yeah, safe. Yeah, exactly. Put them in a they weren't dealing with COVID. They were yeah. all safely oh, Peter, in you're a moving, You're moving so quickly. By the way, you're, you're so confident. While we're waiting for him to get back, have you seen the trailer for the new Saw movie with, with Chris there's Rock? There's another one? Chris Rock is the cop. Yeah. You spiral. It looks like a friggin' parody trailer. It does. It looks like a telly movie or something. I don't want that. He's like, I gotta solve the case. Yeah, like he yells that at the end oh, of the trailer. Oh, no. oh, so bad. I should so bad. True. Um, okay, so we're through to going to freezing zone. Yep. And it's like it's like it's going to be a short run when you know where to go. Except I've run out of stamina. Oh God! Where's your health again? He didn't. He 19. didn't wait. 19. Eighteen. I didn't 18. wait. 17. I should be fine. Yeah, fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah, like it's the kind of thing that's like a minute to run it when you know exactly where to go, but it takes half an hour when you don't. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> You read a sign here, and then you did a couple of... Yeah, I went, so you I took that one. I went through that. that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can we camera cheat it? I don't want to, but, like, I do. I don't know if you can. It won't push through. Mm. Uh, I can't tell. Uh, go in. Yes. Okay, left. So it's right, left. Uh, you don't need to go into the freezing zone, by the way. There's a lamp in there. Yeah, I reckon you're good. Dig Ooh. up. Dig up. Dig up. Uh -oh. Is that a reference to me? Yep. <laughs> That's just a dead end. I think it's just a dead That's end. That's a dead end with no death in it. I believe That's in good, you. Right? That's delightful. That's nice. Those red things above the doors. Oh, wait, did we double back? Yeah, so it's... What does that say? <laughs> I believe in you. I don't. The banners make it so disorientating, oh my God. doesn't it? Oh, fuck. I don't know where he is. Oh. Yeah, I'm totally lost now. <laughs> we're not, well, we're fluking it. If something Give Gus a single. What? Yeah, but that means we need to... We need to... Maybe there's less death traps in this one than it is just about being lost. Because that's a dead end, yeah. Raj was here. That, Raj was here. <laughs> that path is cancelled. Uh, what does that say? Reporting from the weather balloon, the weatherman <laughs> sign. <laughs> that's funny. I think you're on your way. Oh, that was good. Oh, we'll shit. never get back here, so you need to perfect this run. What, what does this, this sign say? you got to read it. Here may be the last words of Joseph of Arimathea. He was, <laughs> I know this. Can you put your thing up over it? He who is valiant and pure of spirit may find the Holy Grail in the castle of... Oh! <laughs> Pete Penitent Man shall pass. Oh, God. <laughs> nice. So damn confusing. Nice. Yeah, we're definitely not coming back through this, but... What does that say? Do you ever wonder if you're more than cosmic dust? 
Don't turn me into cosmic dust, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Why are we here? Okay, this has become a philosophical Exit this way. labyrinth. <laughs> oh! Fuck off! Fuck off! You bastards! Oh my god! Right. Someone's gonna walk me through. You're doing too well. You were on the right track, though. You were on the right track. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not doing it again. No, someone, yeah, I someone, think that was definitely. Someone up. walk me through it now because I want to see the end. Okay, all right. We're definitely not getting. Because we're, we're, yeah, it's after nine. We will never. I've, I've got to go ever, to bed. Ever do that? There's bit. no way. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, you're taking over. Uh, yeah, Do you know though? Yep. All right, so Steph's going to run us through the actual solution. Oh, um, my God. That is insane. Good work, um, man. Uh, you are uh, too many rooms. Reese, can you Built just give rooms. me some um, food? So that if I fall onto a spike track, I have a chance of staying alive. Wait, that's, a, that's something you can do? Uh, uh, food gives you health. So yeah, if right. you start on 25 health, Legend. so if you're fully Are there ladders better. in every spike trap that you can no. get out of? <laughs> I don't think so. I also, think I don't know the idea of hopeful thinking so think she'll survive it. Also, um, your uh, Monty Python uh, thing went down very well with Gus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What so if he's dying? He wouldn't bother writing R, would he? <laughs> so, um, some of the... Uh, no. Some of the... Um, they should have put a bed at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, can't yeah. I can't talk into this at the same time. Um, some of the um, portals that you still haven't gone through is this one that takes you literally just to... Um, I think she's on uh, a, a pit of fire and you just burn alive. Yep. So you didn't experience that one. And then um, there's another one that takes you to the swamp. Good. That sounds lovely. Um, and it's just a bad time in general. Pockety was here. Is Reese, Reese is leading you with a torch? No. Left or there. Or are you remembering this? Um, kind of. <laughs> did someone, when you guys did this, because you mentioned you'd like took it from a... Yeah, it was right, it was like, right. Did someone keep right. a hard copy of a print? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then, yeah, straight yeah, through there. Not. Oh, you don't have to go through the freezing. So I was going through the freezing for no reason. Wrong way. Nah. But is it? That way. Oh, God. This is just... Why is this more tense than I don't know. we were doing it? I don't know. <laughs> it's just people running into rooms and staring at bear rugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I trust it. <laughs> uh, Reese is coming with me to make oh, sure that I... sprinted through that one. Yep. I don't take the... Uh, I am so turned around. The bad route. I want to say... Yeah. This. So we're going through... Help, oh. I've been turned into a sign. <laughs> So by going through Sample text. <laughs> the uh, frozen, zone, I came back into the maze somewhere else random, right? I'm nervous. Okay, that, thank you. I feel like that was a spike trap. <laughs> not focused at all. Uh, you <laughs> just like follow, follow Reese. Let him lead you. Cause, yeah. Because yeah. if you die again, but like... It's, this is, it's more fun this way. I'm just going to I won't fall. die in a spike <laughs> trap because I have heaps of health. He'll just watch you. You don't eat. have heaps of health. You have eaten a lot, but your health is at like 40. Yeah, yeah but it's more than what you had. <laughs> okay, you two. <laughs> well, it's more the way. Give Gus his single. Well, yeah, I was there. I've been there. Okay. <laughs> Reese just booped me from behind. You're going the right way. Continue. Is that feeling you're just watching someone? Okay, play here we go. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely happening. Uh, Steph. Yeah. Just checking you can hear us. Oh, are you saying that I'm ignoring you? <laughs> we have been talking to you and you've not responded to a single thing. Well, I mean, I feel like that's pretty consistent with me as a person. <laughs> um, I How? would recommend that Liz Dahlia uh, goes to the end and builds another portal so that we can, when you fall into a bear trap... She, she's going to be fine. I'm, I'm going to be fine. You, I, why do you have so little faith in me? I only, I'm only surprised because it feels like you've gone through 4,000 more... I'm so confused. Flags than we did initially, but maybe maybe you were just running to... There okay, we go. Okay, so here we are. This is a point that you haven't been to yet, and this is when you went through the portal at the start. This was to teach you this mechanic. Here Something is the riddle, is the arse and we can yes. all do this riddle together. The okay. question mark is... Uh, is the arse is of the, the maze? the arse of the maze. Uh, oh, right. The troll is the arse of the maze. The swamp is the arse of the maze. It's the, and the portals are there. Well, it's got to be the swamp or the portals, right? Swampy the, por the portals are the arse. Oh, the, the portals. Maze. Yeah. The portals are what you come out of. Yeah. <clears throat> we think portals. Okay. So you have to type portals. Oh, I see. And oh, that's it clever. didn't open? <clears throat> it, it didn't open. 
It just yeah. takes a moment. Connected. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you chose the right answer. No, so it's work. just it'll dump they you all. somewhere. So you've made time. maze, uh, sorry, portals with troll that might send you somewhere bad. Correct. Uh, <coughs> and in this case, it was the right answer. So it takes. Not necessarily. It might up. take it's it somewhere positive. bad. It is the right answer. Hey. Oh, that's cool. So you found a way to yeah, incorporate riddles and like actual word games into the maze. That's, that's awesome. Right. That is and very we can cool. change the we can change the riddle to whatever we want. We just change the signs and change the reset. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. You've always got three answers. Have you seen any more of these on Valheim servers at all? Has like we? I think someone's made a labyrinth, but no one's made a death maze. <laughs> <laughs> TM. If you make it. If you make it, you get a visit from Scardi. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. Day 23, I <laughs> this, is Reese running, this is Reese running out of ideas for science. Yeah, fair. <laughs> that sounds like a... Is that a Nick Belling tweet? <laughs> <laughs> this is just a dead end. Uh, cool. Good right. effort. Good effort. Probably this is... to be a dead end and not a pit of spikes. So huge. Death or, death or taxes. Take or death. I choose death. I mean, oh, this, a I, that, that. that's a portal, so I feel like that's bad. This okay. this is like a low budget um, oasis. Oh, from, from, <laughs> from gate uh, open. Oh. There's a Ready Player there's One. There's a gate there. Yeah. Stairs. Stairs. <laughs> we Stairs. Go. So it's, 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 it's a wall. So there's a wall that you can't walk through, but it's yeah. actually a gate. And if you open it, nice. Yeah, clever. Oh, oh Jesus. What's that say? Netwitch. <laughs> Netwitch. Good. <laughs> da, good yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, bloody heroes. <laughs> are they yeah. there or have they just gone? And they're the signatures of all the people that yeah, built. So this, this is all the people who all made All the people that died in the maze. you can add your name to the um, hall of survivors. Oh, well, that's great. No, no. E Emo Chad didn't really make it, but. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, there's, there's more. No. There's more. Here's Liz Dahlia, one of the chief architects and project manager. Very nice. Yep. Here it says, I solved the maze and all I got was this lousy tankard. Good. And a tunic. So this is a like a like a gift shop, like a souvenir shop. <laughs> oh, you trade in your tickets to get a can I get a rubber bouncy ball? <laughs> Something oh, they still like have that. enough, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then that's, more maze runs. That's 85 tickets. <laughs> and then if you come this way, here is the back pocket Hollywood sign. Hey! Oh, nice. Pretty incredible. Very nice. Uh, and then if you keep going through this way. It lights what? up. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Lights up with neon mushrooms. That's How does electricity crazy. exist in this universe? These mushrooms are like, I didn't realize oh, they, they lit up. Proximity? I didn't realize they lit up when you got near them. Um, cool. And so now we have. Can you just quickly now look up for. Start the death maze. To show, yeah. to show, uh, so, so, first of all, looking back at the maze, that's insane. It's huge. But yeah. then just something I forgot to do when I was playing it, and for Nick's sake, look up again. Oh, uh, yeah. You're in that, that's on Yidrasil. Yidrasil. The huge oh, right. tree over the, the whole world. world. It's so cool. I totally forgot to look at it when I played it for like three I know, hours. you don't think to look up and then you do and you're like, what the? F <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now this is a little bit special also, made by the Pocketeers. It's the Back Pocket Studio. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, my God, there's our door. There's our, so like... There's the coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next chair. Oh, That's God. Good. Do we have a couch. bench? This, this is Will. <laughs> good. God, we need a new coffee table. And, like, the, the, the solution to put the camera was this old tanning rack where you would, like, draw a things. tanning rack. That's what I always call Pete's camera. Ye old camera. Easel and canvas. Nice. Very nice. That's Very so good. Cool. Yeah, Three banners little, on the back. Little seat is here. So, Peter, you would sit here. Yep. There he is. It's just like real life. It's just like real life. <laughs> it's about the size of our studio too, by the way. Yeah. Do you do you guys have time to see the um the the treehouse, or do we want to end it there? Uh, how big is the treehouse, and how close is it? How close is the treehouse? It's house? a it's a portal right away. It's a simple portal okay, right away. Okay, we can see the treehouse. Where is the portal? <laughs> <laughs> the portal is a five kilometer run in that direction. Yeah. You have to get through another it's maze. Take eight minutes of walking. Uh, yeah, this is insane. Let's see thank it. you to so much. Thank you so much to everyone who's been doing this. Like it's obviously been like. Thank you is a very strong word considering what we <laughs> put Pete through. It was such a it was such a fun <laughs> project. I think for everyone to work on together. And I say like uh, I say we. I feel like I came up with initial ideas Go and kind of popped step. in and out. But it really was. Um, <laughs> It really was like uh, such this an incredible start, group yeah. effort from Pocketeers. Run, I could have run across it and just headed straight. To I know what a waste! Time. What a waste! Oh my God. Um, so I also all in this at world, at some if, point you have to shoot to go into it. Yeah. Stop. What was that, Steph? These two are muttering. Go on, Steph. Mm. Uh, also in this world, for people to come and check out and not to be discounted oh God, is everyone. also the incredible work of um, 
Bob. Uh, <laughs> Miss Jenkins, who created right. a beautiful tavern and an obstacle course if you want to have like a fun challenge for yourself that doesn't involve it's a little so much less. Death. It's so cool. Everyone's obviously gone ham it's on this server. Like, yeah. the, just the city. It's like it, you live in a city. Yeah. It's a stone Yeah, city. it actually looks, it just looks like a small version of something out of Skyrim. Yeah. So this is um, a Grey Dwarf Getaway, and this is just telling you what is where and what you can find. So there's cabins that are vacant if you want to like, you know, make this your We're home. Closed. No solicitors. <laughs> <laughs> tree so house. This is the tree house one you were talking about earlier. This is, yeah, that, that's like Rivendell. Yeah, it's oh really incredible. God. And there's systems of like building these forges and stuff that involve um, coal just rolling uh, rolling forge. down a ramp into them. That's which cool. Which is really incredible. Um, so this is one part of it, which is really nice. What's the Where's coal? um? Can, let's go straight to the part tavern. Of, like, which getting the materials you need. You oh, need to burn right. wood to get coal, and then you right, use coal okay. and a smelter to tree top make tavern, like iron yeah. and stuff. But All right, like, so check this out because this I find is just so. Oh my god! Oh wow! Just the like the tree branches coming through. That's yeah. so beautiful. You and drink all, here? All of these beautiful little <laughs> items that are like um, uh, that are cool. like set here. Like the this is the proprietor. <laughs> this is skeleton head. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> that's that's funny. Um, this little cauldron under here is so nice. How's he in an outfit? The architecture is just like so amazing. Here are the mead barrels here as well that you can see. Very yeah. cool. Really amazing. I would live there. And it just like there's so many levels to it, and there's so many. I feel like, rested. Um, little, you know. Comfort 15 in that tavern. That's like the highest comfort I've seen in this game. <laughs> <laughs> is that because it's nicely it's decorated? Co it's cozy. It's got decoration. It's got heat, and it's yeah, yeah. It's really beautiful. And it, yeah, if you go, um, Miss Jenkins has a beautiful, paths. like, old timey, like, you know, Witcher style tavern with, like, mead barrels and stuff. And then the obstacle course is there as well. But um, there's That's actually so, so many cool. beautiful things in the server. So if you are thinking of trying out Valheim and you are a um, pockety subscriber, a back pocket subscriber, then you can um, uh, go into the, like, Valheim channel and all the details are there of how you can join the Valheim back pocket server. Awesome. awesome. Um, yeah. Yay. Good work, everybody. Thank you so much for putting that together. That Thank is crazy. This is, see, this is the stuff where I go like, I appreciate this from a distance, but when I get in a game, I freeze up and I'm like, I live in a cube. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what my house is. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Minecraft thing of going, ah, now I could build anything. Night's coming. Get to dig a hole. <laughs> Just like hop Dig a hole, hole. put some, put some uh, sheepskins over me. And I'm yeah, exactly. Ooh, sheepskin. Luxurious. <laughs> Luxury. That was amazing. How cool was that? I that feel like it cool. went really well. It went very well. Weeks of work. Yeah. Weeks of and work. And like still so much fun to be had because other people can now go in there and try it for themselves. Yeah. And, uh, and then you Dying. can rest and respite at the tavern or the Grey Dwarf uh, treetop. I like it. I think that incentive of getting your name at the end of it is actually a really cool idea. Yeah, Instead of not. being like, cool, I did it as well. It's like you can literally carve your name into the wood there as well. So, yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. I love it. Well done, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a very quick back break and we'll be back with the end of the show after this. <laughs> Jellyfish. There's not much to dick around with. Let's just, should we start playing the game? Well, that's his whole attitude to everything, and you'll see more of that as we progress. Can we get a poll in chat if we can have some dick if dicking around is appreciated? If we can have some dick. So let go! <laughs> Head on through. Well, I don't trust you. We're not going to do it twice, am I? Never get tired. Yeah, it's all. <laughs> Damn it, that's enough. That's, that's what you get when you try to troll me. Uh oh. Oh. Look at that. It's now a fighting game. Oh, and I've still got to fly. What is this? We don't do this a lot. No, we don't play a lot of games together either. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. Do you find yourself getting embarrassed in cold weather? Do you have difficulty finding shirts that fit? Are you leaking milk out of one third of your nipples? If so, you might have a third nipple and could be in line for a huge compensation payout from God. 
Hi, we're the team from Akarash, Akarash and Buzzard, and we don't stop until we get you a big payout from the big guy. But don't take our word for it. We lie for a living. Here's the word of one of our very satisfied customers. Uh, yeah, when I found out I had a third nipple, I was like, cool. Uh, but then the team from Akrash, Akrash and Buzzard told me uh, I could get an almighty payout from the almighty. That'll work, won't it? He'll buy that. Akarash, Akarash and Buzzard. The only lawyers you should put your face in to sue God. Because we didn't make you like this, he did. Or she. Nah, it's a bloke. That's right, it said Kung Pooby at the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. Uh, a massive thank you, Tom. Oh, Tom, hum, 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 uh, And uh, Max Jazz Games there for the words from our sponsors. Uh, and of course, uh, to James Buzzard, aka Akarash, for uh, the ad. That ad, actually, the first commercial written. Yeah. The back pocket. I don't know yeah. why we I made weird. a Sue God, but <laughs> it happened. It was just a thing. We went weird hard. We went we? weird Nathan right Nathan. 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 Wow. Nathan. Thank, Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so Nathan. much. Ten Thank you very much, Nathan. Subs. Uh, and also, should say uh, that Max Jazz, our newest... This is all happening too fast. Yeah. Top, top, top Stitcher uh, subscriber getting their very own segment soon. Uh, but also Kung Pooby, not only a funny word to say out loud, but also uh, their game yeah. that they made that is available right now on iOS App Store. You can go there. Uh, it's free to download and check out yourself. A Pocketeer made a video game and has put it out for free on your phone. You should go play it. Thank you to uh, Max Jazz uh, for your support of the show and for your support of the Australian gaming industry at large. And Easy again, words. Kung Pooby. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, you don't forget it. Thank you for that, <laughs> most of all. Uh, and uh, you did see there, of course, a little trailer for the Game Club. We spoke about it earlier, but a reminder the Game Club is running all month. It Takes Two is the game that we're looking at. At the end of the month, we're going to be uh, doing a big chat about that. So please, either play that game or watch along as we play it. Um, before we finish, and I will be f f quick because we are over time, um, you did mention Prey, because that's what I'll be playing tomorrow in, in lieu of uh, the, okay. the game club. Yep. Talk to me about what you've done. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> uh, look, I probably put like two hours into it. Um, <clears throat> and we both played that amazing first half an hour. Yep. Um, and I was really happy to revisit that. Some great music choices, some really cool world building, some really cool world breaking kind of mm. like first moments that I was just very happy to go back in. I've quickly settled back into the realization that it is a real homage to your system shocks, your bioshocks. Um, it is sort of storytelling through uh, a lot of text, um, a lot of phone calls with mysterious voices and a lot of mysteries. Um, I love the design of the place. I love that there's a reveal in there that again is very Bioshock. So I can't wait to watch you rediscover those mm. moments and see how far you got through it. Um, <clears throat> I have struggled with the combat uh, and I got the first gun in the game. Uh, second there's a pistol and I'm just curious if everyone has it it takes up three quarters of the bottom screen and looks like it protrudes all the way into the center of the mm. the screen which does not give me faith that it's a tight combat game which none of those ever were your Bioshocks and stuff like that um, so I'm actually trying to steer myself away how I usually play these games and be like I want to get good at all the shooting and all the combat mm. the combat's not as fun because those creatures the mimics are just like head crabs yep. um, they do evolve I know but I haven't encountered anything beyond that and they suck as the first enemies to evolve yourself with so I'm reading everything I don't do it a lot in games I tend to scrub past it but I'm reading all the emails uh, all the interfaces on the computers are really cool and so I'm going to dive in thick into the uh, law for this one and try and get as much out of it dive possible. in thick dive, dive in thick, thick law to the thick law uh, so you can see me encounter that thick law for like I said I've played the first hour of the game but I will pick it up from the beginning and go through that uh, if you have 
happen as well. So that will be at 1 p.m. tomorrow, AEST. So that's 1 p.m. Sydney time. And not being a game club, that is just uh, what we call a simple backstreams back. All right. All right. There All right. it is. The law. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Steph, you did pretty well with that. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, everyone, for hanging out tonight. Um, we uh, spoke about a lot of video games. We did. Sure did. We saw a lot of video games. We sure did. And you're going to see more video games tomorrow. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for hanging out and watching. There will also, most likely, I'm not going to say who it is and I'm not going to confirm, <laughs> but most likely there will be a special guest next week. I'm just putting that out there. They might not turn up. Thirsty Merc. <laughs> <laughs> and if they don't turn up, we'll have something here instead. Rob we'll, Thomas Sisselwaite. We'll, yeah, we'll figure something out. We'll put, we'll put a picture of their face on something in the studio and just sit it here so it's like yeah. they're here. Uh, but there will be a special guest, we think. On a different topic altogether, uh, Post Show sponsored by Raj. Post Show coming up right now, sponsored by Raj. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you guys there. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for another excellent week of Back Pocket Action. We've got a stream tomorrow at 1 o'clock Sydney time. We're back with the revamped news on Monday at 10.30, the normal news time for a Monday on Twitch. That's also going to be uploaded uh, in a couple of segments on YouTube, and it's a podcast as well. You can head to backpocket.gg for the links to all that stuff, and we will see you tomorrow for... Pray. Pray. Batman's golf. Mm-hmm.